Hi there, welcome along to the Olympic Stadium in Wrocław for round two of the FIM World Speedway Championship. Kelvin Tatum, MBE, alongside me. Looking forward to the action. Uh, let's just do a quick reminder, a quick refresher of the point system, of course. This is after the Heat 20, then we have the semi-finals. Uh, nine points and ten points. 11 and 12, and then the final itself is allocated 14 points, 16, 18 and 20 for the winner. A lot of debate over that system, Kel, but uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll be talking about that for the rest of the series. We will be, uh, and there was no question that uh, over social media overnight, uh, there's been plenty of debate about it, and some people in favour, I think quite a, people against, quite a lot of people against it. Um, with uh, what happened with Freddie Lindgren, that did seem to be, he capitalised massively after a pretty indifferent night. But uh, we've got a brand new night of Speedway. We've got uh, plenty of action ahead. We've got riders ready for heat number one on the back-to-back uh, -back Grand Prix for the first time. It's not uh, new, of course. We've had Speedway of Nations, which have been run over two days. And at this track two years ago, we saw um, the Russians come through and win their first gold medal. But uh, Martin Vashelik there, Looking for a little bit more speed tonight. He had a pretty solid night with nine World Championship points, finishing eighth um, uh, last night. But Jason Doyle there coming out on uh, track for his opening ride this evening, the former world champion. He's looking to really come on strong tonight. You can ill afford to have back-to-back -back, uh, Grand Prix where you fail to score the points. He needs a big one tonight. He does indeed. Jason Doyle from Australia. Real tough lineup. What a lineup for the first race. Matt Sajanowski, yeah, Madsen, Jason Doyle, and Martin Vasilik is a tremendous lineup. So, this is the moment where the boys test different uh, setups, look at their bikes. Well, there's been plenty of rain overnight, we're hearing, and the track will be different from last night as a consequence of that. Cooler temperatures, the moisture in the surface, you can see that it's a dull surface, so there is the moisture in it. And uh, Martin Vasilik has already changed his bike. And he's looking to go on the second one. Doyle there, just having a dig around, getting a feel for the start line. Heat number one is coming up then in Wroclaw. Here we go with the first race of the night then. Matt Sajanowski off the inside gate in red. Runner up last night, of course, Leon Matson. World number two goes off gate two in blue. Jason Doyle, big night needed for him, off gate number three in white, and off the outside in yellow, Martin Vasilik. Kelvin Tatum, MBE, alongside me. Kelv, looking forward to round two. There was some super racing last night. Yeah, super there? opening round of the World Championship last night, and uh, there's no question that we had to wait a long time for it, but uh, it delivered in fine style, and Artem Laguta coming through in fly flying colours. Um, and Leon Matson just missing out on the final. He's here, out here in the opening race. Magic Janowski, the hometown boy, finishing second last night. A strong showing from him with the analyst tire on. Can he produce the goods again here this evening? He's off the inside gate. A handy place to be in heat one. Yep, top eight scorers after 20 races go through to the semi finals. Nothing Ooh. new there. That was a real flyer from Martin Vasilik and uh, it looks very much Doyle. as though the, ra the race is allowed to continue. Jason Doyle has the lead, Martin Vasilik is second and now Matsyanovsky comes through. Matson is at the back here, tracks a lot different to last night clearly but Doyle riding beautifully and he's got the riders all over him now. He won his last race last night, he's picking up where he left off, he's hit the front, this is exactly what he needed. He's made a smashing start from gate number three and he's out in front. They're queuing up behind him though he hasn't got enough speed coming off the corner. Janowski's coming on strong. Slips up the inside. Heat number one. Oh. Oh. Clambering all over oh. each other. Now he runs in the back of him. Doyle absolutely determined to hang on to the first place, but Janowski's not done yet. Brilliant speedway. Yeah, Janowski has got a lot of speed. He does seem to be a little bit quicker than Doyle. He's going to try the outside run now, the home oh, he's hero. Do he's got so much speed. Doyle clamps the inside line. Here comes Janowski. What a move. Oh. So late in the race, he finally gets there. Janowski wins it. Jason Doyle second. Martin Vasilik third. And Leon Madsen at the back. And what a wonderful, wonderful race to open up round two also, of the FIM Speedway Grand Prix Series, Kel. Well, you can't get any closer than that. They were almost sat on each other's bikes there on the third lap as they went through the first and second corner. And Janowski had speed to burn there. Doyle was working so hard out in front, he'll be yeah, really frustrated 
that he wasn't able to hang on to the win. A much improved start, though. There was a question. Look, I can't believe the uh, Christa Gardell. Well, maybe he realised that um, Martin Vasilik actually penalised himself because he moves very early. We were both surprised that the red light didn't come on. But he was in contention coming out of turn two, Cal. Yeah, so it was slightly odd that Gardell didn't put the red lights on, but... Uh, in some ways, I'm pleased he didn't because it was a hell of a race between Janoski and Doyle, and Janoski flying out in front. So much speed. Matsey Janoski, one of the top two last night, who were both on endless tyres. And by the way, we are hearing Vasilik has received a warning. Oh, well, no for surprise. For his conduct at the start line there, but um, every rider had the opportunity to use an endless tyre. Of course, mainly it's Mitas. Uh, but Matt Sainovsky and Artem Laguta in the top two last night are on analyst tyres. You see him move early there, but Dolan then actually capitalises and he gets that bike to drive forward nice out of gate number three. Hugs the inside, charges down the back straight, covers the move from Vasilik, but he cannot stop the uh, run from Janowski. He tries there. I mean, Kaki, that is oh. so tight. Then they clip each other coming out of the corner. That could have got ugly there. They really could have got hooked up there. The footrest could have gone underneath Jason's bike and they could have gone down really in quite a heap, but fortunately they don't. He switches to the outside with Doyle giving him racing room. Fair racing from Jason Doyle. They're hard but fair. But the speed from Janowski was just irresistible. Look at that. Coming out of that last corner, what a wonderful feeling that is. Smashing ride. Great opening race in Wrocław tonight then for round two of the FIM Grand Prix World Championship. It's a 2020 Betard Wroclaw FIM Speedway Grand Prix of Poland, round number two. And of course, we move on to Gorzhov in a couple of weeks' time on the Friday and the Saturday for another double header of action. We're up to heat number two here now. Here's Niels Christian Everson in white, who's had all those injury problems this season. Uh, had signed for Peterborough back in the UK before the UK season or the league season in the UK was cancelled because of the pandemic. Uh, Gleb Chuganoff goes off the inside the wild card here. Mikkel Mikkelsen goes off gate number two in blue. His fellow Dame Niels Christian Everson is off gate number three. And then it's Max Frick who found life tough here last night. He is off the outside once again. He's a Wroclaw rider in the extra league of Max Frick. He's off the outside gate here. Running into that first turn, that's a smart start from Gleb Chuganoff and a clever switch up the inside from Mikkel Mikkelsen. And that was a lovely move the way he switched up the inside. Mikkel Mikkelsen in the blue helmet colour. And now Chuganov is going to try the outside run. The man in third is Max Frick with Niels Christian Everson at the back. Chuganov's not done yet, though, Kel. He's not, but it was a very clever move there for Mikkelsen. He read it beautifully and he was able to get himself to the front. The ideal start for his evening, no doubt about that. Once again, Everson finding it tough. He's out the back. And Frick, of course, who is a home rider, just not at the races with Everson, the more experienced man coming through into third place. But for Mikkel Mikkelsen, of course, he was European champion um, last season. He's in to replace Martin Smolinski, the German, a permanent replacement this year, of course. This is more like it from him. Lovely switch at the inside. I'm sure he learned how to do that at Arlington at Eastbourne during his British career. Maybe not, but it was a lovely move. Clever switch up the inside. And Mikkel Mikkelsen has done a great job there. He wins heat number two. And that's a valuable three points for him. It is indeed. He uh, will be chuffed to bits with that. And the ideal way to start. Yeah, Chuganov looked good there, but uh, Mikkelsen spotted the opportunity, read the race well. Mm. And uh, that's a sign of a rider with a good racing brain as well, I'd suggest. Yeah, a little bit more experience. Now, Mikkel Mikkelsen, the winner. Gleb Chuganov was second. Niels Christian Everson was third. And Max Frick at the back. His tough campaign continues uh, here in Wrocław, his home Polish track, of course, Max Frick. But well done, Mikkel Mikkelsen, the Dane. Uh, many people mm. saying he was unlucky not to be in the series this year from the off. I agree with that. We're going to have a look at the start. Um, uh, Juggernaut is great on the inside there, but just runs that little bit wide coming off the corner, and Mikkelsen just a bit more patient and allowed that to happen and then, then pounced as they went down the back straight. Let's look at it again. All uh, pretty much even Stevens as they enter that first corner, a very level break. But Mickelson there just coming off the inside, taking a slightly shorter route down that back straight. That works well for him. He stays there, wins comfortably. Everson working hard, Max Frick and himself having a battle for the solitary point. And the Danish man coming out on top there. But, but uh, for Mikkel Mickelson, well, that's a much better start to the night. And he's a confidence rider. If his confidence gets up, I think we will see a much improved uh, performance from him.
And we need a much improved performance from this man on screen. There's no doubt that Dudek will be looking for a lot of points this evening. He will indeed. It's looking to bounce back from last night after the relative disappointment of his uh, form last night. Here's Lindgren, the big winner last night, if you like, from a position of seven points going into the semi-finals. You're fortunate to qualify for the semis on seven points as it is. Uh, but with a new point scoring system, he really cashed in. It was unbelievable, really, when you reflect on what happened to him last night. Lindgren, Dudek, the reigning champion, Smarschlik, and Antonio Limbach, who only managed a point last night. He's looking to uh, get a vast improvement to his form well, this yeah. evening, Antonio. He's found it tough this year, and the extra league of points have not been coming easily for him, so he's got to turn it around, and soon. Uh, we've said many times that you've got to get off to a strong start this year. Back-to-back -back Grand Prix, he can ill afford a similar performance this evening. Here we go. Yes, heat number three is where we're at. Bartosz Marsnik oh! in the white helmet colour, the reigning champion, a very nervous, edgy start once again there, and Lindgren has made it. That's a superb start from Lindgren, just loses a bit of control there. Oh. Dudek's all over him, and now here comes Smarslik. The two Polish boys will try and hunt down fast Freddy Lindgren. He's got the lead here, the Swede, riding beautifully from Dudek, from Smarslik, and from Lindback. Yeah, Freddy there, sharp away from the inside. Dudek looks like he's got some speed, though. He's hanging around. Smarslik just beginning to get dropped. Once again, not showing fantastic speed, but Freddy, once he gets to the front, he's a very difficult man to pass. He's ruthless out there. Out in front, the Swede, Lingwin, looking good. Fast tonight. Dudek, much more competitive. He'll be pleased with this. Certainly looking like he's right on the pace. Smarslik and Antonio Limbach getting dropped in third and fourth. Good right from Lindgren. Well, you called it, Kel, that Dudek and Doyle needed a good start tonight yeah. after their performance last night. And, uh, yep, second place is so far for those two. But for Freddie Lindgren, three big points. He only managed seven from his five rides last night. Good start. But he's well on the way this evening. Uh, really made a good start from Dudek. Smarslik, the reigning champion, only a point to his name mm. in heat number three. Uh, so he's got to try and step it up a level or two. And uh, Dudek charging hard. He looked the more likely to challenge Lindgren there Early from the on, two Polish boys. He's got yeah. a puncher, actually, there, just uh, pulled up after the start. So very fortunate to have won the race. And uh, he'll be pleased that uh, the air didn't come out of that tyre just a few seconds earlier. So it just about hangs on. See Dudek there, gets away nicely, but he's a bit untidy as he enters the first corner, runs wide, and that allows Freddie Lindgren then to dictate. I thought Schmarslik here was really going to get amongst it but didn't have the, the pace at all. Doesn't make a great getaway, Schmarslik, the world champion. I think he kind of misses it. The reason why is because Antonio Limbeck's rolling. Um, uh, an untidy start, no doubt, but no red light, so we continue. Dudek certainly Limbeck looking... has got a warning, Kel, just to confirm that. Yeah, uh, and absolutely rightly so, because he rolled on the start. But a good ride from Lingren in front. Yes, he was. So Limbeck has a warning now already in his opening ride. And uh, that was confirmation of the result. And uh, Freddie Lindgren with a puncture. Yeah. Getting a little bit of help going back to the pits I'll there. I'll tell you what, he's got luck at the moment, hasn't he? It worked <laughs> out last night. And he his first ride here this evening, a puncher coming out of the last corner. And he's just got enough to get over the line. But the talk of the town is out here this evening. Now in heat number four, Artem Laguta, who was sensational last night. It was top draw speedway from Artem Laguta last night. Can he reproduce that this evening? Speedway out of the top draw. Speedway out of the top draw. He was immaculate, wasn't he? He was clean, class personified. Oh, I've missed that so much. Looking forward to your social media with pictures of people putting speedway bikes in their top drawer in their bedroom. Yes. Yes, so do I. I think it's um, uh, it's great. But he was, though. He was great last <laughs> he night. He was, absolutely. And he's got quite a handy uh, heat. To come yeah, it's up not here. a bad lineup, is it? <laughs> it's very... The Grand Prix challenge winner, Matty Zegar. You've got Emil Saifudinov, his fellow Russian, Artem's fellow Russian, just to clarify. And you've got uh, Ty Woffenen off gate number three yeah. in white, the three times world champion. And then outside is Artem Laguta for heat. Number four, after this race, then every rider will have completed one outing of this second round of the Grand Prix Speedway Series in Wrocław, the Olympic mm. Stadium, the iconic venue, where Gary Havelock won his world title in 1992. I was, was at the stadium for that. It absolutely threw it down with rain. It was so heavy. Yeah. They paused the meeting, and the local fire brigade had to pump water it was. off the track. It and was then a... it was baking after it that. It was, indeed. It and was Havy was brilliant. He was. He was uh, sensational that evening and uh, won the World Championship on his debut. Here we go, heat number four. 
Heat number four it is. And away from the start, no problems this time. Oh. And it's a great start from Artem Lakuta for game number four. Here we go again. <laughs> Charges round the outside of Zegar. Wuffenden is third, and Saifutinov battling hard as well. They're all bunched up, the three behind Laguta. He's owning this race already. He's got it all under control. He is completely on top form, on top of his game, riding brilliantly as Wuffenden tries the inside run. Oh. Here, Here we comes go. Old Saifutinov around the outside now. What a move. Second, third, and fourth. It's all there because Artem. Artem Laguta is in a class of his own. Wonderful stuff from the outside and has cleared off. Saifutinov now makes it a Russian 1-2 by coming through into second place. Wuffenden having to work overtime to get the better of Matty Zagar. Super move from him, but Artem Laguta sensational. Laguta wins the race. Uh, no, it's the last lap. Laguta sensational. Charging forwards. I can't count. <laughs> I told you we were rusty. Laguta riding beautifully here. He's carving up the opposition again. So dominant. And again, the question has to be asked tonight. <laughs> Over four laps, wins the race. Uh, the he question was, has uh, to be asked Arsene again. Laguta won that race twice, yes. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he won it on the third and the fourth lap. <laughs> 61.9, that's got to be the Sharp. fastest time. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's for four laps, isn't it? It was for four yeah, laps, for brilliant. three laps it was less, wasn't it? Love it, but there love, we it are. love it. But what a move from Saifudinov as well, a Russian 1-2 brilliant in heat number four with Wolfenden third. So the winners so far, Lindgren, Janowski, Laguta and Mikkelsen. Well, he's just in dynamite form, isn't he? He's just looking unbeatable and makes such a wonderful start. When we, uh, when you spoke to Greg Hancock in the Talking Dirt program, he was saying that he was watching how, you know, he was sitting on the bike and the way his throttle control was, and he certainly got it absolutely spot on. Bike set up perfect, and the, there's no doubt that he's um, uh, roaring away out in front. Certainly, Emil Saifutinov rides very strongly here and gets the opportunity to come sweeping around the outside to follow his compatriot through, making it the Russian 1-2. And the Russians are flying like rockets in their opening uh, gambit here with Wuffen and then working hard for the solitary point. But uh, he knows how valuable that could be come um, uh, at the end of the 20 heats and his fifth ride. But uh, for the two Russians, well, they really are flying. And that man, 2-2-2, two, 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 Artem Laguta, is uh, in a class of his own right now. Yeah, last night it was 3-3-3 three, three, three on his race card, and it could well be the same again tonight, couldn't it? So, we can hear from Paul Bellamy from BSI, the rights holders of the Speedway Grand Prix Series, along with Armando Castagna from the FIM. He's going to talk to Kiri Bloor now. Uh, so let's hand over to Kiri right now. Well, joining me now is uh, Paul Bellamy, uh, Senior Vice President of Motorsports at uh, IMG. Now, there was a lot of talk yesterday and including from me as well, but this morning in the Polish press about uh, the tyre situation. Now, I was probing the riders, but in fact, Paul, can you just give me a sort of a, a wider view on the tyre situation? Yeah, of course. Anlas are the official tyre of the Grand Prix. They've been with us for three years. Um, one of the things we put in place this year because of COVID-19, we asked all the riders to pre-order their tyres. Some of the boys pre-order them on the deadlines, they've been delivered and they've got them. Some of the other riders that didn't order in time now want the analyst tyre, um, but of course they're past their deadline. So the tyres are absolutely available to everybody. It's a company that's been with us uh, for many years um, and it's, an, it's still an even playing field. Everybody has the opportunity to have those tyres. Fantastic, okay, thank you so much, Paul. I'm gonna bring in Armando Castagna Thanks, now Paul. as well. Now, Armando, can you just uh, tell us the situation? I think Paul sort of just shed some light on the fact that everyone can order these tyres. Artem, Magic, Niels and Mikkel Mikkelsen just uh, were the four riders that chose those tyres, but the Anlas tyre option is available to every rider going forward and was already. Well, I think uh, that Paul already explained very well the situation. We as FIM, is our job to monitor and to make sure that uh, there is not an unfair advantage. And this is what uh, we will do, of course, in the future. The reality is that uh, in, in Speedway, we have six homologated companies and uh, uh, we have to respect uh, every one of them. The, the companies that invested a lot into the sport. And uh, of course, uh, in the near future, we will make the necessary, necessary checks. Okay, well, perhaps we're seeing the 
conversation because the Atlas tyres are working so well. So it's not a controversy, but it's a conversation just because those tyres are now currently working well for the riders. Well, but this is also a development that a company does in the last three years because it is not true that Anlas is a new company in the sport. Anlas has been three years in Speedway and they've been working hard and developing. And some riders have believed and tested and now they are using. The others also had the possibility or had a contractual uh, how you say, position with uh, other manufacturers, but this is also what is nice about our sport, competition be between different manufacturers. Okay, thanks so much, Amanda. Um, and the tyre situation will certainly unfold through the Speedway Grand Prix series. Well, very interesting debate. Some riders are clearly not happy about it, but Paul Bellamy explained it very well there that, yeah. uh, that the order was available, the, the, the order for delivery, the, the riders that actually ordered them, got them on time, had them delivered, and they're using them. So uh, the know, only thing I'm slightly unsure about was whether you actually, if you didn't put your order in on time, can you are now... Are they still available are now? They, are they now available to you moving forward? That wasn't clearly answered. Um, I understand it. If you haven't got your, the way I understand it at the moment, if you haven't got your order in on time, you don't get them this season. That's because that, that's how I understand it, and I think that's why possibly one or two riders are a little upset. Um, they may have been a bit complacent about putting the orders in, but now that they've seen the evidence of people going very well on an analyst tyre, um, they probably feel a bit aggrieved that they can't now get them because ordinarily in a normal season they would be able to so um, a bit of controversy going on there probably a bit of ill feeling about it as well but um, I've got to say fair play to the lads that actually um, took the opportunity to try them and test them and uh, see how they went now we can hear from Chris Holder the 2012 World Speedway champion and get his thoughts on the first four races in Wrocław Joining me now is Chris Holder. Now, Chris, we were talking earlier, you've obviously been out on the track as well. We've seen Artem go out already and be flying, but actually we've seen a good performance from Jason. So first of all, what was the track like as you saw it when you went out earlier? To be honest, it looked like I was going to have a lot more grip on it, judging from the start, but I spoke to, you know, Bartek just before and um, Emil, and they reckon it's going to be a lot slicker tonight. So as the first four heats then, it was, you know, quite eventful for, you know, first four heats are normally not much happening, but a lot of action for, you know, the minor places so it looks good okay well it did rain last night how much does that affect the track or has it affected the track yeah it's just going to have a bit more moisture in it i suppose and um you know as the boys keep racing on it it should all come up to the surface and hopefully make it for a bit more of a dirt line going but at the minute it looks good it looks really nice okay well we've seen a bit of a change of form jason seems to look a bit more comfortable out there would that be a change of setup overnight do you think yeah for sure he would have learned obviously from last night and um you know started off a little bit different tonight and yeah he made a great start and you know if it wasn't Magic, perhaps he probably wouldn't have got past, but Magic knows this place inside out and um, he worked it well. It was a good race. Well, we haven't had this jeopardy for a while here at Speedway Grand Prix Series, which is the tyre jeopardy. Obviously, the Atlas tyre is working very well. Four of our riders have got those tyres. Well, it certainly added a bit of spice to the evening, hasn't it? It has, and I, I guarantee if I was in that position and Laguda's flogging me on that tyre, I'd want it too. But like they said, you know, they had to order them, which I didn't know about. But um, there's no tyres here for the boys that want to jump on it now, but that's um, that's another problem. All right, thanks so much, Chris. We'll check back up with you later. No problem. Interesting um, thoughts there from Chris. Looking at the... Uh, Looking at the uh, race times, though, Laguta actually did a very fast race time, so the track may have just a fraction more grip in it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it uh, works out, but um, there's no doubt that this um, tyre conversation is going to rumble on for a week or two, and it'll be interesting to see what happens by the time we get to Gorjov in two weeks' time, because this man, uh, Janowski, is on the analyst tyre. He's flying. Artem Laguta, who's out here with him, he's on the analyst and analyst tyre. Excuse me. And, um, yeah, maybe one or two of the riders, or 12 of the riders, obviously didn't feel that uh, they needed to have the endless tyre. Certainly the world champion is on a Mytas. You can see the logo on the rear tyre there. But uh, um, if uh, Artem Laguta and Janowski keep going fast and keep dominating speedway races, 
I can assure you there will be uh, plenty of shouting and screaming coming from other riders to have them available for the next uh, two rounds in Gorjov. Winners so far, Lindgren, Yanovsky, Laguta and Mikkelsen then in Wroclaw. They're the winners for the uh, opening four heats. Yanovsky is one of them here in the blue helmet colour. And it's Artem Laguta off the inside. So it's quite a tidy lineup. Laguta off the inside, then Yanovsky chugging off and Smarslik, the reigning champion. Yeah. So this is quite some lineup to look forward to for heat number five. Indeed it is, Nigel, and uh, Smarslik just struggling for a little bit of pace, and he's up against the best two riders on show so far over the first two nights. Smarslik looking for a big ride here. Artem Laguta, the man of the moment, off the inside in red. Then Matt Sijanowski, runner-up to Laguta last night, gate two in blue. Gleg Chuganov, the wild card off gate three. And the reigning champion, Bartosz Smarslik, only got a point from his opening ride. He's off gate number four here. Can the top two be denied here for the two inside gates? Laguta and... Oh, oh. I'll tell you what, Chuganov went quick there. Oh, yeah. Chuganov went really quick there. And now Yanovsky comes around the outside. Here comes Chuganov as well. Smarslik still very much in the mix going into that back straight. And look how quick Yanovsky is here. And now Chuganov tries the outside run on Laguta. Smarslik loses control of the Chuganov. bike and he's at the back. He is indeed, Smarslik certainly now working the inside. Superb stuff from Yanovsky. Gleb Chuganov looked like he chanced it at the start there. I thought the lights were going to come on, but they didn't. And he's hanging on in second place. Super ride from the home rider. The world champion out the back. He's not having a good night so far. Yanovsky majestic out in front. Look at Smarslik. Long tracking down that back straight, working the bike so hard to get the better of Artem Laguta. Yanovsky out in front, dominating where he did in his uh, opening ride. Well, Laguta doesn't look anywhere near as quick this time. Look how far back he is. Smarslik's in third place. The leader, no doubt about it, the home hero from this club, Wroclaw, Matze Yanovsky. Terrific ride from him, so much speed. And what about Gleb Chuganov as well, also a home rider. Riding beautifully there, and Smarslik, the champion, passing Artem Laguta. Well, you never know what's around the corner in Speedway, do you? You do not, and uh, that's quite a shock result there, but what a smashing ride once again from Yanovsky. And Chuganov into second place, Smarslik was third, and Artem Laguta, surprisingly, relegated to the back. Yanovsky, two rides, two wins, brilliant stuff from Magic. Indeed it was, and uh, he is quite clearly in the zone, as it were. Artem Laguta was the shock there by failing to score. See it again, there's no question. Well, anyway, it goes on. I'm not going on about the start, just looked a bit untidy. Here we go, Gleb Chuganov, four points to his name after two rides. That's a much stronger start. If he hadn't touched the tapes in his first ride last night, could easily have made the semi-finals. Here we see with Janowski digging in that bike. That bike is set up beautifully absolutely powering away out in front such a wonderful feeling when you've got the bike working as well as that smarslik i tell you he works so hard just for the solitary point and uh, gets the better of the russian martin laguta who inexplicably drops three points in one race tonight we did not see that coming but for this man out in front six out of six two out of two he is looking red hot tonight yeah he's going to go to the semi-finals the way he's going that's for sure Talk of tyres tonight, and the analyst tyres, which weren't available to the riders to order by a deadline, of course, and that's uh, those riders that got their order in have got them and are able to use them tonight once again. Saifudinov goes off the inside in red. Then it's Freddie Lindgren off gate two in blue, a winner first time out. Leon Madsen yet to trouble the scorers from his opening ride. Remarkable. And then Niels Christian Everson goes off the outside in yellow. A Russian, a Swede and two Danes ready to do battle in heat number six. They are indeed and Saifutinov rode really strongly in his opening ride to come through into second place. It was quite a tear up for second, third and fourth but uh, he prevailed into second place, starts strongly with two points. Madsen a shock in his opening ride, failing to score and uh, not quite showing the speed we saw at the back end of last season. But Freddie Lindgren, well... Super result for him last night. He started in strong start. He won his opening race, gate two for the Swede this time. Never, never count him out. He's a very determined man these days, desperate to be world champion. 
Yep, here we go then with heat number six. Which way will this one go? Can Madsen get off gate three? He can't. Saifudinov's made a nice one from the inside gate. Now will Lindgren make the run around the outside? Here comes Madsen up the inside. All three together going into the third oh. turn. And now Lindgren, Lindgren will read the situation and charge through into the lead. Oh, oh my goodness me, what a race this is. Oh, it is indeed. Four of them went over the start and finish line as they completed the opening lap. Down the back straight, Everson coming oh. into it. Leo Madsen, you can't take your eyes off this one, Freddie Lindgren ruthless coming out of turn four in the opening lap, firing away out in front still the action continues for second, third and fourth, Leon Madsen now coming round the outside, no the door is slammed shut by Emil Saifutinov, sensational speedway, brilliant stuff but Freddie Lindgren's going to move on to six points what a night he's having so far he's definitely fast Freddie Lindgren tonight, that's for sure, look at the speed he's got going into turn three yeah. Everson is there in yellow with Madsen at the back, uh, in third place I should say, and the man at the back is Emil Seifert and often Everson just hangs on. Everson just hangs on for second spot ahead of his fellow countrymen, but what a ride from Freddie Lindgren. He is absolutely on top of his game tonight. He is. Maybe realising that he had a bit of good fortune on his side to get into the semis last night. And maybe that's made him feel good. 62.6 the time. Everson, Madsen, Saifutinov. And it's two out of two yeah. for the Wolverhampton legend, Freddie Lindgren. That's absolutely right. He had um, uh, plenty of good seasons at Wolverhampton. There's no question about that. But by golly, uh, he has come from nowhere. He had seven points after five outings yesterday. He's got six from two tonight. A touch of, uh, I'd say that's an improvement. Um, just a bit. Uh, just a touch. Just a touch. And here we see it now. This was uh, one hell of an opening lap. Fantastic stuff. Saifudinov doesn't even know he's there. He's looking to his left. He's looking at Leon Madsen. But look at this move from Freddie Lindgren. What a switch to the inside. Four of them down the back straight here. Almost touching each other. He's Bre read it here, Calvin. He's read it beautifully nice. He switched there. He knew what he was going to do. Then comes charging through. And Everson also follows him in. What a moment that was. That was such an action-packed opening lap of Speedway. You could not take your eyes away from it. But for Freddie Lindgren, well, he is um, on top form so far this evening. Great stuff here. Leon Madsen coming back into it. Saifutinov loses out here. He'll be frustrated with that. Interesting to know what Freddie's got on his tyres tonight. Is he a Mitas man or an Anlas man? I think he's a Mitas man. Maybe this Anlas sort of hysteria may just calm down a wee bit when you're seeing speed from a man like that out in front. Super right from Fast Freddie. It was indeed magnificent, and we're up to heat number seven now, and it's Patrick Dudek off the inside gate. Matty Zegar yet to score. Mikkel Mikkelsen, a good win in his opening ride. He's off gate three, and uh, Jason Doyle going off the outside. I wonder if Fast Freddy's got some second-hand tires of Artem Lagusha from last night. Because <laughs> he's... <laughs> Slip me, me a few, few yeah, quid, yeah. yeah. Give you a fiver for a couple of those tires, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he's going great guns tonight. Mikkel Mikkelsen started well. He had a nice ride. So did Dudek. He had a much improved performance from him. So uh, it'll be interested to see if they can build on that uh, now in their second outing. Yep, heat number seven it is. Krista Gardell with his finger on the button, the Swedish referee. It's Patrick Dudek who's got the lead early on. Much better from him. Watch out for Zegar and blew up the inside run. Doyle. But Dudek's got the speed and now here comes Doyle charging up the inside. Good ride from Jason Doyle. Now Zegar will try and cut back on the inside. Very, very tight and Doyle through to the back. Can you believe it? Great move from Mikkel Mikkelsen. <laughs> Unbelievable move there from the Dane. He's oh. just struck by Doyle ruthlessly in front of Zegar. Zegar then replaced the compliment. But Dudek, we said that he was looking better in his first outing. It's proving to be the case because he's hit the front here and looking very quick indeed. Doyle's overriding the bike there, just trying a little bit too hard, killing his speed. But Mikkel Mikkelsen's coming on strong here. Dudek out in front. He's got company. Yeah, this is the proper Patrick Dudek that we know. Yeah. But he's got Mikkel Mikkelsen all over him. Yeah. Good to see Mikkelsen getting in the mix in the Grand Prix series. We know he's good enough. European champion last year, of course. Patrick Dudek delights the Polish fans here. That's better. And that is a good ride. Much better. Absolutely. That's better for Patrick Dudek. Nice ride. Gets the victory. And is up to five points out of six now as well, which mm. is great for him. More Dis like it. Disappointment He's... for Doyle, though, at the back that time. Overriding there. Here's the result. Patrick Dudek, the winner. Mikkel Mikkelsen second. Matty Zegar was third. And Jason Doyle of the Swindon Robins. Chesterhova in Poland. 
at the back, the 2017 world champion. Lindgren and Janowski, maximum men so far. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, there's no doubt that um, Jason Doyle was working overtime there, but he hasn't got the speed he wants. He, you know, we saw in his opening ride, he made a really good start, but just didn't have the pace to stay there. He ends up overriding a little bit here. Look at how hard he pushed there down the inside of Zagar, but he can't quite stay there. Dulex hit the front, lovely, from the inside. Smashing move here for Mickelson as the two lads in second and third run wide, and the Dane takes advantage of that. Slips up the inside, and that's where he stays and shows good form. Here we see it again, smashing move. Got to say, Zagar's hard on Doyle there. Doyle's wild, coming hard back at Zagar there. Nearly wipes him out as they come out of turn two. Real battle for third place uh, with Zagar coming through. But the boys out in front, Dudek and Mickelson, riding nicely, showing great pace. Yep, we're up to heat number eight now as well. And that will be the conclusion of two rides each for the boys. Martin Vasilik on uh, a warning off the inside gate. Uh, he's got one point to his name. Max Frick and Antonio Limbach yet to trouble the scorers. And Ty Wuffenden, who worked hard for his one point in his opening ride, he goes off the outside gate in the yellow helmet colour. He does indeed, and he'll be looking for more. Um, uh, with Freddie Lindgren unbeaten so far. And, of course, a former teammate uh, at Wolves. They were very successful together there, winning the championship. And um, uh, he will want to pick it up. Fourth last night, of course, Wuffenden. I can clarify the tyre situation, Kelv. Good. For those riders that wanted to use the tyres for Gorzhov, rounds three and four, that deadline has passed. The deadline to order tyres for Prague was the 21st of August. That deadline has passed. OK, so... The only opportunity for the riders, not on uh, analysts, if they want them, they, the only opportunity they'll get to ride them is over the two days in Torrent. OK, well, they're stuck with what they've got then, and... Um... I've got to say, it will be interesting to know what Freddie Lindgren's on. I think he's on Maitas and he's flying. Yep. Here we see Martin Vasilek out in front, smashing stuff from here, and Frick down the inside night. Super ride from the Australian. Yeah, much better from Max Frick. And then Vasilek charging hard again now. Wuffenden's in yellow in third place right now, and Antonio Lindbach's at the back. Now, Wuffenden's on the pace, but Max Frick is riding beautifully here. This is what we see from Max Frick, or what we used to see every week in Manchester at Bellevue last season. Uh, and that was superb, and Vasilik chasing hard, Wuffenden really chasing Martin Vasilik hard as well, he's going to try the inside run again here, Kel. Frick out in front, looking a million dollars, here comes Wuffenden, gets the better of Martin Vasilik, Wuffenden hasn't quite got it so far this evening, but he's using all his riding skill to get as much out of the bike as he possibly can, Frick quite clearly benefiting from the practice of uh, racing last night, and he's moving on beautifully in front, great move at the early part of the race. Yeah, this is much more like it from Max Frick, started his European career with the Edinburgh Monarchs and now very much established at Bellevue, but not this year because he decided Super to ride. sit out British Speedway this year for the Grand Prix, but that's more like it mm. from Max Frick, congratulated by Ty Wuffenden, and he'll feel a lot happier with that. That'll be a huge confidence boost now for oh, yeah. the Australian Max Frick. Ty Wuffenden second, Martin Vasilik third, and Antonio Limbach struggles go on at the back there. The top of the table then, we see Freddie Lindgren and Mats Ianowski on six each, Dudek and Mikkelsen, five apiece. Britain's Wuffenden in eighth place on three. Well, the track, uh, the race times are just a fraction quicker than last night, and there's no question what a way to bounce back for Frick. Failed to score in his opening ride, picks up the big three points here. Martin Vasilik away nicely from the inside, but Frick just rides lovely around that first corner. Bike digs in, powers down the back straight, hits the front. Wuffenden has to work really hard here. He's back in third place at this early stage. Nice ride, super riding style Frick's got. Just sense he just needs to build his confidence at this level. I think he's got more than enough talent to be able to be competitive. If he can get confidence, then I'm sure he'll um, do himself justice. Martin Vasilik here just working hard in second place, but Ty Wuffenden, such a clever rider. Um, not quite at the races at the moment, but every point valuable and uh, gets the better of the Slovakian up the inside and the Brit gets the two points. But uh, for the Australian out in front here, Max Frick, uh, this is a huge boost for him. His first heat win of 2020 in the Grand Prix. Brilliant stuff for him. Yep, Vasilik looking stylish, but he couldn't land a blow on Max Frick because the Australian no. was so superb there. It's almost like he's just pressed the button and tried something different, Frick. And well, they've got nothing to lose. No, you know, exactly. Their expectations are not uh, to win 
the World Championship this year. It's probably all about surviving the championship. And of course, last night it didn't go well, possibly a touch nervous, but um, this time out, looking a lot better. I think we can get some interviews now. Reaction to the action with Kiri. Chris Holder with me once again, just look back over those heats. Chris, that was an interesting shake-up. We've just seen a great performance from Max. He's not had a great season so far, but that was a really strong heat. Yeah, that was great for him, and that'll do his confidence, you know, a world of good. Um, he looked fast too, you know, he did it from behind out of the first corner, made a good uh, good first turn, and yeah, come in into turn three here and hit that dirt and look really good out in front, so that'll be good for him for sure. And I know it's the question that's always really annoying for a rider that we want to ask, but Martin Vashlik, he's gone from great form last night to seems like it slipped away what happens overnight to see someone's performance change so much that's the beauty of speedway you know it can either be your night or, or have a tough start you know he's obviously started off a little bit slower tonight but um as you've seen yesterday there's still a lot of points up for grabs and you know he's just got to make that semi and if he gets through to the final he could do you know what freddie did last night so not panicking just yet i don't think but he'll want to turn it around sooner than later and just watching Ty out there, he's looking at different lines to other riders. Is there a line that you've seen that's working better? Uh, Ty, I've seen then he changed his bike too, so he's you know obviously wasn't real happy with the first one, and um, he looks like he's got a lot of speed, but just got got held up behind Martin there for a couple of laps, and then yeah, he's done a lot of laps around here, and he worked him out quite quick, and and chased Max, but Max he had good speed and was sometimes it's, you, you can't make an impression, but uh, he looked good, and I'm sure he'll be pulling some crazy stuff out there soon. <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. Talk to you never. Well, yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, Max Frick quite clearly has the talent, has the speed. When he rode for Bellevue Aces last year and previous seasons, he's been absolutely wonderful around uh, the National Speedway Stadium. And uh, no doubt that he can do it. And he rides at this track. So not a complete surprise for him to win a race, but he'll be delighted and the confidence boost that he'll get from that. Martin Bashlik, uh, plenty of racing to come for him. Stepping up for a chat now is uh, Gleb Chuganov. Now, Gleb, two great heats there. Have you changed your setup at all, feeling confident out there? I'm sorry. Two great heats, three points and a two points. Uh, a really good start to the evening. Yeah, yeah. Now it's going, I think, a little bit better than yesterday. So uh, keep fighting and uh, try to go into semi-final, I think. OK, yeah. now, has your setup changed from last uh, night? Sorry. Uh, not too much. Uh, I think some changing in my head. A little bit uh, uh, nervous down. And uh, yeah, something like that. Fantastic. Well, it's certainly a unique experience. Back to back rounds for us. It's unique for us as well. What's it like to go out for two Grand Prix series rounds, one after the other? Uh, I'm, so, I'm no, sorry. Okay. I know we can hear the Polish channel. That's why Gleb's saying I'm sorry. Back to back rounds. It must be tough for you. What's it like being out there with back to back rounds? Uh, it's okay because sometimes we have uh, race in extra league, something like that. Uh, in two days, uh, we was have in three days, uh, I think one month ago. And so we're training for that in winter. And uh, I think it's okay. Perfect. Thanks so much, Gleb. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, his English is quite good, considering he's a Russian native. It's uh, yeah. it's good it's good English from Gleb, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I remember talking to him in the um, in the Speedway of Nations in 2018, and he came up to me and he said, "Oh, you are the mad commentator." He never did. He did, and uh, he's a really cheeky guy, and uh, he's a he's uh, he's, he's got, right though, isn't he? he You're is. mad. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, so are you. And uh, the fact <laughs> is, is that. Um, he's got plenty of talent as well, and these guys are right, used to riding. You know, the guys that ride in three leagues, they can ride five nights a week. Yeah. Um, so back-to-back -back racing, I think the biggest difference here is that you're riding two Grand Prix back-to-back. -back. Uh, we were chatting earlier about the fact that you got, um, you know, had the two-day world final back in 1987. Speedway of Nations, of course, is over two days as well. So I think most of the guys are pretty accustomed to being able to cope with um, a couple of days of racing. Yep, so heat number nine coming up next. Everson, Wolfenden, Janowski and Dudek. Mikkel, two not bad heats out there, picking up second place in both of those heats. So set up slightly changed as we came into tonight. Um, yes and no. Um, the first race last night was pretty good. Then I made a wrong decision after that one. And then it was just, you know, I was on the struggle bus all night trying to get it working. And then 
and the last one I sort of got it right and uh, we just sort of started off where we uh, where we finished in the last race um, yesterday and it's working better. Fantastic. Now there's a lot of talk about these tyres. You've got those tyres, so they're obviously working tonight for you. You know, to be honest, I think it's bullshit. Um, sorry for my language, but uh, you know, it's a homologated tyre. It's FIM approved. You saw last night I was using the tyre as well and I was, uh, yeah, rubbish to say, <laughs> say it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a combination of everything. You see riders on my, my, me test tires out there winning races as well. So, you know, it all comes down to how you set up the bike and everything. So I wouldn't say there's a, an advantage on the on the tire, but uh, I got to say thank you to Endless, Endless Tires for, for sponsoring me. All right. Thanks, Nico. Enjoy the rest of tonight. Cheers. I think that was very well said. Um, I think the fact that, um, that you know, Freddie Lingwin's on a my test tonight, I think it'll calm down. I think um, uh, when somebody wins on a new tyre, I think there's a, a little bit possibly a, of overreaction, but um, we will see. But um, another interesting race coming up now. Janowski unbeaten so far, and Dudek's out with him here as well. And uh, Dudek looking much more like his old self on five points. And Mickelson is a win and a second place, moving on to five, which is a strong performance from the day. Yeah, I mean, um, Janowski just looks so much quicker than everybody else, but I said that about Laguta before his last ride, and uh, look what happened to him there, finished stone last, so and he was you just a, don't know. And he was on an analyst tyre, and <laughs> all of a sudden you can't... I'm tired of talking about tyres. So am I, and I think it will calm down. I think that you'll find that... Um, I think the way Mickelson actually summed it up in that interview was quite... Uh, was really mature, wasn't it? You know, bike setup, getting everything to working together, those two boys last night that won first and second, um, they did the business. Yeah, so heat number nine coming up then in Wrocław. Can anybody beat Matzej Janowski? We'll find out very shortly. We're up to heat number nine then in Wrocław, and it's Niels Christian Iverson off the inside, three points so far. Ty Wuffenden is off gate number two, and it's Matze Janowski off gate three in white, and off the outside in yellow, Patrick Dudek, a win and a second so far for him. So uh, we'll see if anybody can beat Matze Janowski off gate number three in white. He has yeah. been unstoppable so far. Yeah. He's got his Wroclaw teammate Ty Wuffenden just inside gate number two. And Everson looks better tonight, and Dudek with that win last time out as well. Yeah, this could be quite a tear up here because the two poles are looking good. Wuffenden looking for a touch more speed. Everson working awfully hard as well. Very competitive lineup. It is indeed. Heat number nine. Third round of races for these riders. And they're away first time of asking. It's a good start from Janowski. Will he get there? He's going to drift wide. Everson's got the lead beautifully here. Wuffenden is second, and now Dudek charging hard on Janowski. Wuffenden tries to dive the inside run on Niels Christian Everson. This is better from the Dane. Yeah. He's dialed in here. Niels all right. Wuffenden second. Janowski has got so much speed, though. Ty will know what it's all about there. He's going to try and close oh. the door. Well, there's enough room there. Janowski battles through. Wuffenden oh. coming back for more. Not quite. Wuffenden hanging on in second place. Terrific tear up between the two teammates. Everson looking really good out in front. Wuffenden working so hard. Now Wuffenden's beginning to power on. Switches to the inside. Can he squeeze up there? Everson there. Oh, just a touch too much grip. Dudek out the back. One lap to go. Throw a blanket over the first three. Proper speedway in Wroclaw again. And Janowski's oh. trying the inside run on Wuffenden. He's getting so close to riders, isn't he? He's almost touching bikes again. Yeah. Everson, though, Magnificent from the Dane, hangs on for the victory just ahead of Wuffenden, and Matt Sajanowski was in third place, so yes, Matt Sajanowski can be beaten, people. And Patrick Dudek at the back, but what a ride from Everson. I think all his experience came into play there, Kelv. Oh, no because doubt. Because he knew that Wuffenden was trying the inside run. He rode a perfect line there, Niels Christian Everson, the Peterborough man, wins the race, Ty Wuffenden second, Matt Sajanowski third, and Patrick Dudek at the back. Yeah, that was a smashing speedway race, no question. And uh, Niels Christian Everson showing what he's all about. Great tenacity, moving on to six points from three rides. He'll be delighted with that. Dudek missing out that time with uh, being at the back. And uh, there's no doubt that um, Janowski also dropping a couple of points as well. But um, we see it again. Tapes up, 
Everybody behaving nicely, lovely. And uh, Everson, certainly uh, superb away from the inside. I thought Woofenden had got there, you know. It looks like he might just, it's a very even break actually, but Everson right around the inside, whatever they've done, it's working. Because that bike powered off the first corner, sweet as you like. Dudek nearly running into his compatriot down the back straight, but he can't land a blow. That momentum stopper there really does kill his chances of getting amongst the points. Look how tight it was. I tell you what, Dudek does well not to run into Janowski there. He had to get it, off the gas quick. He there, had a he? moment, I tell you. His heart was in his mouth there. Great battle between the teammates. Um, Wuffenden making Janowski oh, work. Oh, he got him here, Kelf. Yeah, he looked like he had the run, but Wuffenden, you know, savvy guy. Lovely racing, racing brain. Racing brain, yeah. racing brain. Just subtly made it that bit more difficult to come by. But for Everson, what a confidence-boosting confidence, confidence boosting ride that will be. He's had a torrid time this year. Please for him. Six points and well on the way to a semi-final spot. Lin back yet to score off the inside. Gleb Chuganov. Goes off gate two in white, two second places. Mati Zegar, just the one point, already assured of a place next year, of course, by virtue of his performance in the Grand Prix Challenge last Saturday. And Leon Madsen going off the outside. He is not on the form he was at the start of last year's series uh, when he made a tremendous start and a great impact on the SGP series. You've got to remember that Leon Madsen's had two lots of back surgery. Yes, he has. And they were significant injuries. I know that one of his discs were burst and he had a microdiscectomy. I mean, he has been through the wall, so um, you've got to give him a little bit of breathing space. Here we go, gate four for Madsen this time. Yep, heat number ten it is. Away from the start, Leon Madsen off the outside, can't quite get there. That's a nice one from Lindback. Are we about to see Lindback get the, the winning Madsen. touch here? Madsen charging through from fourth to second, and now That's he's going to try and get up the inside and go past uh, Antonio Lindback. Oh. He does it easily there. Chuganov now passing Lindback as well, and Lindback is in danger of going from first to last as Zagar comes through. But Leon Madsen riding beautifully here. Oh, he's fired up this time, isn't he? Smashing move, the uh, trademark move from Leon Madsen, not making a great start but just showing great pace and all of a sudden that bike is powering away out in front. Another super ride from Juggernaut here, the wild card doing a great job tonight. A little bit more relaxed than uh, he was you know, yesterday when he touched the tapes in his opening ride. But uh, he's looking like he could make the semi-finals this evening. Zagar tailed off in third place and then back once again his woes continue. But for Madsen, this is more like it from him. He'll be pleased with this, they must have tweaked that bike. He's fast in front. He is indeed, and he really has got that race under control. Superb ride from Leon Madsen. Lindback will be disappointed. He's obviously out of confidence. He's obviously having a tough time, yeah. and it is tough to watch for him. He's got many, many fans around Europe, of course, Antonio, but he really is struggling here. Uh, in the opening two rounds of the SGP series. Madsen, Chuganov, Zegar, Lindback, who went from first to last. And that will be a bitter blow once again. He's probably low oh, yeah. on confidence anyway, Kelv. That's a, just a killer, that one. That really does make it difficult for you. You don't know what to do. But for Gleb Chuganov on six points from three rides, that's a smashing effort from the wild card. But Madsen needed that. He only had one point from two rides. He moves on to four. And uh, I've got to say, after uh, it was an indifferent start, but look at this. He just chops to the inside. And then all of a sudden, that bike digs in. and. He's got the speed that we're accustomed to seeing from him. And then back there is battling hard at this early stage, but gets moved over there, just finds himself in a vulnerable place, and they're queuing up to come by. Gleb Chuganov, the Russian, um, uh, is able to then hang on in second place. Consistency from him, a smashing night uh, for him uh, as the wild card and moving on to six. But for Leon Madsen, the world number two, um, this is more like it, and you just feel that maybe... He might just have found the key to conditions. Zagar and Antonio Limbeck struggling, but for that man, three points, very useful. Very useful indeed for Leon Madsen, and uh, four points now from three rides. Shaping up nicely now. We're trying to really establish a picture of who the top eight are likely to be. And uh, wow. Jason Doyle here, two points from his first ride and then a zero. Could really do with a big result here. Needs a win. Yeah, he's up against the defending champion Bartosz Marslik, who we know is not at his best. Emil Saifudinov, two points from two rides as well. So there's big name riders with big reputations looking for big points here. Yeah, they're going to make a few tweaks. Quite clearly, one or two guys are beginning to work it out. And uh, Smarslik needs more speed. So does Doyle. Doyle hasn't had enough. Saifudinov looks quick, but just got caught in the wrong spot. But Frick on the inside last time. What a big wing that was for him. 
and can the Australian produce it again here? It's a, it's a tough lineup for him, but um, uh, his confidence must be better than it was previously. Here we go. Brilliant racing prospect. Yeah, heat number 11 it is, and away from the start, it's Max Frick once again, but charging hard around the outside, and up the inside is the champion Smarslick. Now Doyle tries the outside run, watch out for Neville in the yellow helmet colour. The lead, though, here is with the defending champion, Bartosz Smarslick, the man in red here. Max Frick charging hard again oh. on the inside run. We're seeing some smashing speedway now, Kel. Oh, Doyle comes charging into third place as well. Smarslick working hard to get the better of the Aussie boy. Frick, but Frick's on the pace. Here comes Sai Fujinov charging back into third place, the fourth, his way past Jason Doyle. And uh, you can never allow any movement there from uh, Smarsley because he is such a hard-working rider out in front. The world champion showing his mettle here. He needed it and he's producing it. Frick, though, steady in second place, solid in second place. And Sai Fujinov back in third. Doyle's woes continue. Just not enough speed coming out of the bike. He started really well, Jason Doyle, as well. It's a shame, that one for him. But what about Bartosz Marslik, the reigning champion, with a fine ride, and how he needed that as well. Mm. Smarslik, the uh, Gorzhov rider, who will be on his home track in a couple of weeks for the next two Grand Prix rounds. And... Um, it's going to take some stopping around there. Really was. Saifut enough struggling tonight. Three points from three rides. Yeah. Not good enough. Smarslik, though, he needed that. Produced when he really, his back was against the wall. Frick, Saifut enough, and Doyle behind Smarslik. That was your finishing order. And Janowski, seven points from three rides. But still, we await Freddie Lindgren, another one of the unbeaten riders tonight, to Tape. see what he can do in heat number 12. Yeah, tapes up, and Doyle makes a great start initially with Frick alongside him the two Australians in the first corner they run wide and that opens the doors for Smarslik and Sofutinov tight going into turn three on the opening lap Frick then comes through into uh, second place I thought for a moment he might be able to put a bit more pressure on the world champion but it's not to be but five points from his last two outings very useful indeed Saifutinov then coming through on Jason Doyle, and Doyle, as hard as he's working, just hasn't got the speed he requires. He'll be so frustrated back in the pits. They're going to have to really do some soul-searching to find it, if they possibly can. Out in front, though, the world champion, after two disappointing outings, picks up his first win on the night. He'll be really pleased with that. Needed it. Five points from three rides. Freddie Lindgren, unbeaten so far. And um, can anybody stop him here? Artem Laguta is on the inside gate. He'll be looking to bounce back from his last race disappointment. When, uh, when we I... were asking the question, can anybody beat Artem Laguta? Well, he finished last in his last and, ride. And, and then three of them did. Yeah, and Lindgren, who scraped into the semi-finals with seven points from five rides last night. Yeah. Um, tonight, he's already got six from two. Yeah, he's looking good, isn't he? Yeah. He's looking really good. Coming out of gate three, he'll be happy with that. He will. Laguta off the inside, then off two, it's Martin Vasilik, who's been scoring well in the extra league in Poland. Mm. Emil, uh, the uh, gate number three is Freddie Lindgren, and Mikkel Mikkelsen going off the outside gate has ridden nicely tonight as well. It's been a decent meeting. We've seen some good speedway. Track conditions slightly different after the overnight rain that, would, that they had. A little bit of movement at the start there, but it's a clean getaway for Artem Magutra on the inside. Now Lindgren tries the inside switch to get the better of Vasilik. Now he's charging hard, putting pressure on Artem Magutra. Magutra's got a race on here now because Lindgren's going to chop up the inside. Here comes Fast Freddy once again, really putting the pressure on Artem Magutra, oh! who spots her over his left shoulder. The line that Lindgren was trying blocked the move, and that was a good ride by Magutra. It was indeed. He's bouncing back in fine style here. Dropped three points in his previous ride, but he's out in front looking good. Mikkel Mikkelsen now coming through on Martin Vasilik, who's having to work very hard for his points tonight. Freddie Lindgren looking like he's going to drop a point for the first time, but eight points, well, that's better than last night after five rides, so he'll be happy with that. Out in front, Artem Laguta showing the form we saw last night again. Bouncing back in fine style here, Nigel. He is indeed the... Normal service removed, resumed, sorry, for Hatem Laguta in the yeah. red helmet colour. Riding beautifully, super quick once again, and the first rider to beat Freddie Lindgren tonight. Lindgren had a real good go early on there, but ultimately couldn't get near Laguta in the end. And that's a fine, fine ride from the Russian, 61.9. Fast, really yeah. fast. That, that actually replicates his uh, heat-winning time in his opening ride, so once again the speed 
certainly has returned. The Russian is flying again this evening. Vasilik getting that third place ahead of Mikkel Mikkelsen. So it's Laguta, Lindgren, Vasilik, Mikkelsen. And Freddie Lindgren is top scorer after three rides each with eight points. Well, this is a nice way to bounce back. He would have been shocked a little bit after his previous ride, Artem Laguta, but uh, um, really, in truth, there was a moment when Freddie Lingwin looked like he might be out of land, a blow coming out of Turn 4, and uh, but it, uh, it wasn't to be. Just can't quite get there, and even though um, Artem runs wide here and he chops back to the inside, Freddie, Artem's bike is working so well, he just hangs on out in front. It was tight for a moment, but then it all settles down. A bit of a battle going on for third place with Martin Vasilik coming through. And just shows you how topsy-turvy World Championship Speedway can be with Mickelson looking really strong with a win in a second place and then out of nowhere runs a last. Be uh, frustrated with that. Vasilik having to work hard is consistent, but uh, not consistently quite good enough. So it's... Um, uh, a frustrating time for the Slovakian. I'm sure with two rides to go, he'll be looking for a little bit more. But um, so far, you've got uh, Freddie Lundgren really looking good tonight, building on that, uh, well, a touch of good fortune that he, he enjoyed last night and uh, coming through into third place after only scoring seven points. Of course, he was excluded from one race, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, Artem Laguta at the moment really is enjoying a rich vein of form. Smarslik working hard as always. His, um, his focus his focus and uh, determination is uh, a sight to behold. Great team. It's uh, Artem Laguta's team just uh, making sure everything's tipped up. We've got uh, two rounds of races to come. And uh, We'll now know who the semi-finals are, but uh, we can get a little bit more reaction now from down in the pits with Kiri Bloor. Chris Holder back with me again. Now, Chris, things are certainly getting shaken up tonight quite a bit. Now, we saw Leon with uh, a couple of bad heats, but now back on form. Any ideas why that is? Oh, he's on the same bike, so, you know, from watching and how this track sort of works, it's you could be the fastest guy out there but not be in front but if you leave yourself in a vulnerable position you know they're carving each other up pretty brutal and um if they knock wash off a bit of speed it takes them too long to get going but um it's tough they're racing hard out there and now obviously the red and the blue gate are working well but i'm also seeing no points off those gates it's quite an interesting pick which gates are working for sure look you know they all look pretty good you know not sort of one gate that seems to be standing out and um like I said, that first corner is really crucial to, you know, put yourself in a good spot, not to leave a door open for a rider to, you know, not necessarily pass you, but just take your line away from you and uh, kill your speed. So that first lap's wild. All right, thanks, Chris. See you in a bit. Always good to hear from Chris Holder, of course, the 2012 World Speedway champion based in Torren now in Poland. And, uh, has been with uh, Torren in the Polish Extra Liga for quite some time, stayed with them in the second division. And uh, yeah, all good. Let's hear from Max Frick now. He's going to be speaking to Kiri. Max Frick joining me now. Now, Max, that's what we've been waiting for a good couple of heats from you. I'm sorry. We're so far away, we can't hear anything. I'm going to step a bit closer. Max, a great couple of heats. <laughs> a great couple of heats. OK, we have a great couple of heats there. Yes, yeah, my last couple of heats, uh, I'm feeling much better. Um, you know, it's been a tough start to the Grand Prix yesterday. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to come out and make some changes and, and be better today. OK, how are you finding the track? The track's, the track's really nice. Um, you know, it's a little bit different to yesterday, a little bit slicker, but um, it's still it's really nice, nice and smooth, and I think there's some great racing out there. So um, I just need to keep making some good starts and, and hopefully pick up some points. All right, Max, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much. So, thank you. Well, we got there in the end. <laughs> the roar of the bikes not making life very easy for Kiri down there in the uh, interview area. Uh, but, yeah, Max Frick riding a lot better tonight with zero in his opening ride, and then... Whatever he did, whatever he changed, not 
quite sure what he did, but uh, five points out of a possible six from his last two rides was excellent. And, uh, yeah, a lot, lot better from Max Frick. Great panoramic shot of this wonderful, iconic venue, the Olympic Stadium in Wrocław. Such a beautiful part of the world. The centre of the town, the city is, is wonderful. Um, and the crowd, I'm sure, are enjoying themselves tonight. We've got eight qualifying races um, still to come. Yeah. Eight races still to come before we go into the semi-finals and the final. We have indeed, and uh, it's building up very nicely. It's uh, a little bit uh, of a surprise with one or two of the results from riders. Saifutinov certainly looking for a bit more. And uh, he's out... Uh, here in heat number 13, Janowski flying, Limbach really he's having a difficult time, Mikkel Mikkelsen, that was a, a shot where he'd been looking really consistent and then runs a last, it just shows you how difficult it is and how competitive it is, just making sure the chain oil is working correctly there, you've got to keep that oil just dripping on the chain because you don't want it to get dry, otherwise you'll have problems, but um, yeah, this next eight races will um, decide the top eight for tonight. And it's been a decent meeting again. I think it's been pretty much as good as last night. We've got uh, some good racing going on and very competitive. And guys are going to start getting a little bit more desperate now. I think Jason Doyle will be scratching his head back in the pits, Nigel. It's, um, it's been very difficult for the uh, former world champion so far. Beautiful uh, skyline. Wrocław, red sky at night. Shepherd's Delight, is that what they say? Quite sure what that is in Polish, but mm. there we are. But yes, and um, a wonderful venue, truly oh, wonderful. Oh, fabulous stadium! And when it was refurbed for the um, World Games, I believe it was 2017, they spent 100 million euros on this place, and uh, all the infrastructure inside has been redone. The plumbing, the wiring—I mean, everything's been done. The new start and finish straight with the stand there, but the outs outside of the stadium looks the same. I must say, it's a, it's a really charismatic place to be, and it's retained its character. Jacko, that's the uh, number one mechanic for Wolfenden, just um, doing a bit of time. Maybe they're changing their bike this time. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on this time. But yanovsky has been going great guns. He's dropped a point this uh, uh, so far, but uh, second last night, he's uh, replicating the sort of form from last night, which is not, not always easy, and particularly as a home rider and a pole, of course. The expectations on the poles is huge. They are quite demanding, the public here. They love it, but they want to see their heroes do the business as well. I can remember when we think about Thomas Golub for two decades, carried the weight of a nation and did it supremely well. And now there's a group of them with Schmarslik, Dudek, Janowski, those three in particular now having to carry that burden. And Schmarslik becoming a world championship uh, winner last year. Mickelson just taking a bit of a keen look at uh, track prep. This is a tough time for Antonio Limbach. Yeah, well, what about the thoughts of Antonio, mate? Because mm. he's he really is struggling. Mm. Um, I don't know how he put something like this right. You know, he's, he scored one point last night. He's failed to score tonight and was leading a race. So he's scored one point in eight Grand Prix races over these last two nights. And yeah. how do you put that right, Kelv? It's very difficult because... Um, it's very difficult to find form in a Grand Prix because he's not coming here with any form. That's the problem. You know, they're scratching their heads coming here. It's not like he's just had two or three really strong results in the league. He has had a tough time in the league. So, you know, this is um, uh, a harsh environment if you're not going very well. Nobody's going to do you any favours. And we saw that in the last race where he hit the front and got relegated to the back in the blink of an eye. So. It's, uh, it's a very tough environment to find form, but, you know, Antonio Limbach, we've seen some performances from him in the in the past where Speedway of Nations has been absolutely fabulous for Sweden. Yes. You know, where he was so fast. But a couple of years ago, that night at Vastovic we had, he was unstoppable. He was doing it from all directions as well, wasn't he? Exactly, so he's got the ability, but, you know, I just fear that when these, this sort of form, last year 12th, Touch fortunate to be back in the Grand Prix. I do hope that um, that it's not a step too far because sometimes being put back in when you've had a season like that, it can work one or two ways. It's an opportunity to really get your act together, or at the moment, it's only going one way. So, fingers crossed for Antonio, he can find it and find it quickly. Yep, yeah, so Freddie Lindgren 
top of the chop on eight points from his three rides, and we move into heat number 13 now. Here's Mikkel Mikkelsen in the red helmet colour. Mats Janowski looking to uh, score some big points here, although he's got seven already, so... He's you looking know, good, isn't he? a couple of points and he'll be in the semi-finals anyway. Yeah, comfortably in the semi-finals. Uh, Lindgren going great guns. Last-minute uh, tweet to uh, the new bike for Emil Saifutinov, who's struggling tonight. He needs to turn his fortunes around in uh, this race. He needs a big three points. Can the Russian do the business this time? Here we go then with heat number 13. It's Mikkel Mikkelsen going off the inside gate on five points. Antonio Limbach, gate two, yet to score a point. Emil Saifudinov going off gate number three in white. And then off the outside in yellow, it's the local boy, Matsey Janowski. Uh, Kelv, let me just ask you about Janowski and Laguta. They're obviously super quick. Uh, a lot of talk about the tyre situation, but is it because their gearing's better, their bikes are set up better? What, what are your thoughts on that? Is it well, all down to the tyre? It can't be sure. No, it's not all down to the tyre. There's no way that that tyre can be that much better than the other tyre. It may be uh, slightly different, and maybe uh, at this particular track it just suits the conditions a touch more. But um, I think that uh, those two boys are just riding extremely well, and they've just nailed it on the setup so far. Yep, OK. Heat number 13 it is. Big lineup. And away from the start they go, the fourth outing for all these riders. And the lead is with Mikkel Mikkelsen in red. And watch out for Janowski. Janowski's the man in the yellow helmet colour who comes down the back straight, rides beautifully. He takes the lead now. Matze Janowski is a local boy, uh, grew up around Wrocław, and here he is. And Limbach is third now with, once again, Russian Emil Saifudinov Kelv struggling at the back. Yeah, he changed his bike here, and it hasn't way, uh, paid off at all. He is struggling behind Antonio. Janowski, meanwhile, is absolutely flying in front. Mickelson has responded well after running last, last time. He's in second place. But look at Janowski. He is once again showing fabulous speed. Really is enjoying it here at his home club. Conditions absolutely perfect for him, and he's powering away out in front. So Putinov still hasn't landed a blow. He's only got two points from three outings, and it looks like it's going to be two from four. And that really means that his night is all but over. But for this man, Janowski, looking like a winner tonight. Yes, and the flags waving, the scarves waving in the crowd. The local boy delighted and uh, moves into the semi-finals now. That's guaranteed, a cast-iron guarantee that uh, Matze Janowski is on his way through with three wins and a third, ten points, and the home fans are absolutely delighted, mm. and quite right too. Absolutely, and, uh, you know, he lives locally, he uh, is very comfortable in this part of the world, has ridden for Wrocław for some time now, and looking very comfortable. Tracks fast tonight. Mikkelsen second, Lindback third, and Saifutinov at the uh, at the back there, so it's... Um, it's actually Limbach's first point of the night, isn't it? And only his second point of the series so far. Mm. And he's beaten Emil Saifutinov. So quite clearly something not working there for Emil. Yeah, and he was fast last night, Emil Saifutinov. So a massive, um, uh, a massive shock there because he had pace last night, Emil. And uh, this tonight, he just can't find it. And here you see the move from Janowski early on down that back straight. And he's been doing that to everybody. And um, Mikkel Mikkelsen will be pleased after not scoring in his previous outing. It was a much better effort from him uh, around the inside. But Janowski, well, quite clearly comfortable out in front. And the Vlotslav uh, fans in the crowd here will be delighted with that. And the two boys celebrate as they slow down before going back into the pits. But for Magic Janowski, well, 10 points from 12 is uh, super in the semi-finals, looking good, second last night. Looking like he could get a whole load of world championship points again here tonight. Yeah, now Max Frick, five points from his last two rides. Mm. See how he gets on here. He's got Leon Madsen off the inside gate. This fella, Artem Laguta, the talk of the championship over the last two nights. Magnificent last night. Madsen off the inside, Laguta off two. Max Frick going off gate three in white. And Patrick Dudek goes in yellow. Good race. And uh, everybody beginning to find form here. Dudek much improved. Max Frick is more confident. Uh, there's no question that Artem Laguta returned to winning ways last time in a very fast time as well. But uh, Leon Madsen, whatever they did last time, it certainly 
enabled him to get back to winning ways. And I like the way that Max Frick has turned his fortunes around. It's looked really impressive in his last two outings. So smashing line up. Here we go. Yep. Here we go then for heat number 14. As you say, Cal, superb lineup. And that's a good start from Madsen off the inside gate. Mm. Nailed it there, but can he hold off Laguta? Laguta's going to try the outside run, and he's got that speed down the back straight. Here he comes now, sweeping into turn three, but can Madsen block him out? Max Frick charges up the inside run as well, but here comes Laguta! So much speed, so much quicker. Madsen now is going to try the dive on the inside once again down the oh, back straight. Madsen Super stuff. Super stuff from Madsen on Arton Laguta. Laguta winding it on round the outside in the pit corner. Can he hit the front? No, he can't. Manson squeezes him up. It's not over. Laguta's not going to give up. He's round the outside again. Does him. Brilliant stuff from the Russian. Looked like he's going to move on to nine points now. Leon Manson made him work really hard for that. Max Frick back in third place. Certainly he's not, not quite up to speed as the front two, but Artem Laguta and Janowski once again showing fabulous speed out there. And Dudek started with five from two and is now on the verge of two straight zeros. Artem Laguta the winner, Leon Madsen in second place. Now, that was a super speedway race, but, yeah. you know, Laguta got so much speed and when he got the lead back there, he made it look fairly easy. That has to be said, when he got the lead, he pulled clear of Leon. I'm not sure I'll say it was easy. No, <laughs> yeah. no absolutely. But he's certainly full flow, isn't he? And he was fast. Look at that time, 61-6. That's wow. fantastic. Yeah, Laguta, Madsen, Frick, and Dudek at the back. What on earth is happening here? There's some unpredictable score lines coming in tonight from Wrocław. And Janowski on 10, Laguta on 9. Mm. And Freddie Lindgren on eight is how it's shaping up at the top. All about getting into the top eight, of course, to make the semis and the final. Yeah, this is great stuff again from Artem Laguta because Leon Madsen looked like he was in the box seat here. Ordinarily, you'd think that um, uh, Madsen would win the race from here. And if there is an improvement or a, a, an advantage with the tyre, it's there. The analysts may just be picking up a bit more grip as they come out of the corners because there's no question that the Guta is able to pass Leon Madsen as Madsen, he replaced the compliment here, but he can't put the, bait, the race to bed. And last year he did. Um, but this time the Guta is able to just keep coming at him and it just can't resist it. And the Russian is able to keep moving on. Time will tell with the tires whether there are specific conditions that suit a certain tire, you know. And um, there's no doubt that uh, Laguta looked good there, and he's got nine from 12. And Leon Madsen, well, five from his last two, that's an improvement. But for that man, and uh, whatever you think about the rear tyre, he is in top form, and he's been in top form all season. It's just not uh, last night and tonight. He's been doing it for his club in the Extra League right from June. A reminder, we're back with GP Speedway in two weeks' time. A week on Friday, actually, we can say now. Gorzhov, round number three. And then two weeks tonight, Gorzhov round number four. And then we have more the following weekend. So mm. we've got back-to-back -back Grand Prix weekends, four Grand Prix in two weekends. Yeah, Prague is the uh, the third venue. Yep, Ty Woffen and inside here. Then Jason Doyle, two world champions off the inside two gates. Freddie Lindgren, who has serious aspirations to be a world champion. He goes off gate number three here. And Gleb chugging off the wild card, going off the outside run here in heat number 15. Another cracking lineup. Which way will this one go? Can Fast Freddy nail it again from gate number three this time? Doyle Whoa. squeezes him wide. Chuganoff comes through on the inside run now. Wuffenden has the lead. That's a great start. Chuganoff has blocked the challenge of Freddy Lindgren. Wuffenden is going to hold the mid-track run here to try and block those behind him. Chuganoff second. Third is Lindgren. Doyle's piling the pressure on Freddy Lindgren now as well on that inside line. But Ty Wuffenden looking really good here. Wuffenden out of gate number two, flying away here. Got to think that they've changed the bike. Changed the equipment, looks much, much better here. Looks much more like his old self. Chuganoff, you know, he's having a super night. He's had three second places, look like he's going to have four with Freddie Lindgren and Doyle once again struggling out the back. Three-time world champion, the local man, Vroclav, of course, he rides here. Looking like a superstar in heat number 15. Gleb Chuganoff just begun beginning to come under pressure from Freddie Lindgren. Look at Wuffenden go here. Fast. Ty Wuffenden of Great Britain. He's going to transform his night. He's going to move on to eight points, and the home fans are delighted. And no doubt our British audience, or a lot of the British audience in the UK on BT Sport will be delighted about that as well. Yeah, Wuffenden and time for one of these for the first time this season. Woofy, woofy, woofy. Yeah, but Wuffenden 
He needed that, and uh, his first win on the night, moving on to eight points, as you rightly say. Got to say that Gleb Chuganov is having an outstanding night. Um, uh, four second places for him, and uh, he's looking like he could make the semi-finals with a ride to go this evening. Freddie Lindgren in third, and Doyle, oh, a night to forget so far for him. Doyle is going to be furious, absolutely furious. Well, two, four, two points from four rides, that's... Uh, <laughs> Disappointing to say the least. For this man, though, that's a turnaround in fortunes. I believe they came out on a different bike here, and he, he really looked like he meant business. And the bike uh, certainly worked there. Not sure if it was a new bike or not, but whatever they did, it uh, it worked a treat. And Chuganoff blocks Lindgren here. Look. Oh yeah, and uh, Chuganoff comes charging through there. That does uh, Woofenden maybe a touch of of a favour. Doyle working hard back in fourth place, but uh, the Russian Gleb Chuganoff certainly pushing on. And uh, this man, Ty Wuffenden, well, he'll be pleased with that because suddenly they found some speed and he needed it. If he's going to make the final again tonight, that's the sort of form he needs. Yeah, good ride from Wuffenden. Looks super fit, doesn't he? He's, uh, he's been really working hard on his that's fitness. It. Hasn't really talked a lot about it this time. He's been doing a lot of cycling in the mornings, yes. I know that. And... Uh, he said he's dropped some weight. That's all he would tell us when we spoke to him on the podcast. That's right. That uh, he uh, had dropped nine kilos from when uh, he kind of bulked up a wee bit after he broke his back last year. But uh, looking very, very healthy indeed. Heat 16 is where we're at now. Bartosz Marslik, the reigning champion. Niels Christian Edison, who rode better last time out. Mm. Martin Vasilik, who's only struggled for consistency tonight, only the four points so far. And Matty Zagar. But you know with Matty, two points from three rides but it's a strange one because he's already qualified for next season. Yeah, I just wonder whether that's taken the sort of the urgency off of him. You know, to be perfectly honest, he can go through this season without doing very much. Of course, he won't want that, but there's no doubt that the pressure's not on him to motivate him to really be desperate for points. And uh, so far in the first two nights, he's found it difficult to come by points. So here we go, heat 16. Yep, smart slick, he won his last outing, can he? Build on that and make it eight points from four rides. It's a good start from gate number one. Oh. Bartosz Marsik nailed that, absolutely. And now he's going to pull clear down the back straight. The man in blue helmet colour here is Niels Christian Everson, who's riding so much better tonight. Zegar tries the inside run to put him under, the, put him under pressure here. And Martin Vasilik once again struggling tonight. He's at the back of this race. Everson second, riding much, much better. But what about Smarsik? The world champion nailed the start and looks superb. Yeah, after two disappointing rides, he is looking much more like himself. And uh, he nailed that start, certainly, and he's looking quick in front, and he'll go back-to-back -back wins, and this will put him in the semi-finals. And he, like Wuffenden in the previous race, is looking much more like we're accustomed to seeing. Hanging off the side of the bike, bike working good, going forward, and uh, everything working in harmony. Smarsnik looking superb out in front. Everson, though, picking up valuable points in second place, an improvement on last night. Smarsnik, the world champion, going to win in fine style. Yeah, there's a group of riders on eight points now. Smarsnik is one of them, and uh, Ty Woffenden is another one in that group, and they've still got one race to go. And uh, heat number 16. So that means that every rider has now completed four outings one race to go apiece, and so good to see Niels Christian Everson riding so much better tonight. He is also on eight points, and after what he's been through this year... Well, that's a great injuries, return. It's tremendous, yeah. yeah really pleased for Smarslik, him. Smarslik, Everson, Zegar, Vasilik, your finishing order. Martin Vasilik struggling, four points from four rides now. As you can see, Everson well and truly in the mix for the top eight. Four riders on eight points now. Janowski on ten. Yeah, lovely ride from Bartosz Smarslik. Makes that inside gate work for him. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, he, uh, he uh, then hugs that inside line and the world champion looks like a world champion here. Uh, Zago in second place briefly, but then Everson is able to get the better of him. And the Dane, well, all of a sudden, tonight is looking much more like what he uh, can do. He's had an injury uh, ravaged season, but... Uh, this Grand Prix this evening will be doing him the world of good. I don't know if it's raining at all, but I um, uh, hope it's not. But uh, there's certainly uh, Artem, um, excuse me, Mart uh, I'll get there in the end. Uh, Bartosz <laughs> Smarslik out in front. It's looking good now, and uh, you wouldn't put him past him now, really beginning to push on because he's had two wins back to back. 
and uh, they have improved. And he's got gate one again, so a win from there. Well, all of a sudden, double figures, that would be very handy. Got 11 Grand Prix points for finishing sixth last night. Mm. Point behind Leon Madsen in fifth. And then you go to the finalists of Laguta 20, Janowski 18, Lingren 16 and Woffenden 14. Mm. Let's hear once again now from the former world champion, Chris Holder. Well, again with me is Chris Holder. Chris, this is certainly an interesting night for sure. Ty has suddenly finally found that win that he needed. But there's no sort of one rider really standing out there. Everybody is battling so hard. Yeah, I think the track's providing that, you know, that type of race. And so it's really difficult for anybody to just be the number one guy every time. But I think Magic's looking really good. You know, he's number one, which is difficult after the track grade every time. And, you know, he just made a great start off gate four and looked really fast. So good for Ty as well as well as Bartek to get that win I think they both needed it so it's going to be interesting what is that with Bartek and say Ty is that set up or is that literally just what you're saying sort of finding their form as they move through I think a bit of both you know I spoke to Wolfie just before and he felt good in the race before but I think he ran a second and um, you know sometimes you just need a little bit of fresh air and uh, a good first corner get that speed up and you know Wolfie was riding some pretty wide lines here probably a bit wider than most guys and uh, he just sailed away I looked good Okay, rain's coming down. It's not that heavy, but as a rider, what what does that mean to you? You obviously want to be keeping an eye on it a little bit because the you know the inside's probably getting a little bit slicker now, and um, it's probably going to be a race for that sort of dirt line that's going to build up after you know a few laps. So you wouldn't be really impressed with it, but that's it's the same for everybody. So just focus and get on with it. All right, thanks, Chris. See you in a bit. No problem. Yep, so a little bit of drizzle in the air, but hopefully that's nothing too much to worry about. We have reached heat 16, so. Whatever happens, we know we have an outcome tonight, a result. But I would suggest, Kel, maybe cut back on a little bit of this and just crack on and get through to Heat 20. I think so. Um, uh, heat 16 is the break-off point when we get a result. So um, uh, it would be called now, it would be a result. But um, it doesn't look heavy, does it? Uh, it's difficult to tell. Um, uh, but uh, we had some heavy rain, I believe, overnight here. Um, but this track and the way they can deal with it, they can... Uh, they can cope with a, a reasonable amount of water on the track, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, they won't want to do too much track, Greg, and they want to keep racing if they can. Here we go. Uh, Freddie Lingren's bike. He's having a good night, Freddie. He's um, picking up some decent points after a terrific night last night. Uh, Everson much improved. Eight points for him, looking like a semi-finalist tonight with one ride to go. I'm sure he'll be very keen to do that. That'll be a massive boost for him. Yeah, he's up against Laguta in Heat 19, along with Limbach and Doyle, yeah, who are but, both struggling, so yeah. there's points to be had there, potentially. Yeah, gate four from him, 19, he's got to have half a chance there of at least a second place. They'll be looking at that, there you just saw the timing cover off on the uh, Jason Doyle bike, still working hard to find something that'll just get him amongst the points, because it hasn't worked so far this evening. Great, and continuing. And um, let's just hope this rain doesn't spoil what is building up to be a Super Grand Prix. And, of course, Janowski's on 10 points. He leads the way. He's the number one man right now. And he will want to continue that, uh, that on if he can. And particularly as a home rider, to win here in front of his home crowd in Wrocław will be a special moment for him. Second last night and back it up with a win. Wow. He really puts himself in the picture. Doom and gloom there, written all over Martin Vasilik. He's worked hard tonight. It just yeah. isn't working for him. This is such a tough competition, isn't it? Oh, Grand Prix brutal, series. Brutal, man. And the, the fine margins, nice. You know, the difference between winning and losing. Look what's happened to Saifutinov tonight. He looked super last night. Yeah. And the, this evening, he's just not doing it. And I bet you, I bet the difference is tiny, tiny. Yeah. And, uh, Phil Morris directing track grading there on the turns but uh, just didn't see Saifutinov having three points from four rides I just didn't see it no um, and Dudek starting with five and then two last places I yeah mean, it's difficult to understand so inconsistent Laguta's pit crew and he's dropped Bike three covers points. on well, it's drizzling isn't it you know so no but you know like Laguta's gone three th three not three three and inexplicably had a last place but couldn't make a uh, an impact and Magic's dropped two points and you know but there's no doubt that they've just nailed it and they're feeling good about the bikes so um, uh, things are working well for those two guys let's hear from Ty Woffenden now 
Okay, Ty, that's what we were looking for, that win in that last heat. But you've been picking up some uh, good points along the way. Yeah, definitely. Um, after I, Yesterday, after I laid the bike down uh, for Fred, the engine hasn't worked the same since then. It was very soft in the semi-final, the final, my first race today. So we jumped on the other bike and uh, had a lot more speed, but still not quite there. And now we feel like we have a good setup. So uh, another important last race from gate four, um, you know, and try and uh, get in that semi. OK, well, we were just talking to Chris and he noticed that you were running a bit wider than perhaps other riders. Is that because you know this track so well? I just felt like com more comfier out there. I was trying to carry the momentum, build the speed up. My um, first two laps were garbage, so came around like gate one. You, if you drift up, they come underneath you, and if you stay on the kerb, they give them the chance to go around you. So it's always hard from one because you run around the pole, and then you've got to stop and get in the run on the fence, and then get back to the pole to cover it again. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. But now I've got gate four, so um, it's going to send it. All right, keep it going, Ty. Cheers. Yeah, ties off gate four in heat 18 against Smarslick, Madsen and Mikkelsen. Tough race. Just a bit. Tough race. He's going to have to be at his best there, but quite clearly from that interview, feels more confident about his um, his setup. So um, let's keep our fingers crossed that uh, that is the case. Patiently waiting now for the tractors to get off the track and riders can then get out there. And uh, there's um, just a finishing touches to the track grading and we'll be on with um, heat number 17 which sees Janowski coming off the inside. Frick is improving, Zagar well, is okay and pretty Lingwin. they'll be interesting to see how he goes from gate four, could be quite a tear up but I just fancy that yanovsky uh, has got a bit more pace than the other three and he will be favourite for me yes. um, to win heat 17 um it was interesting, Chris is right, you know, in his interview with Kiri, it's not always easy riding at number one, coming out on a fresh track every time. It can work for you, but it also can work very much against you. So um, he's done remarkably well to pick up 10 points riding in that position. Um, the good thing is that you do have a fresh track, and certainly from the inside, when they move the material back towards the inside, it can actually be a, of some benefit. Yeah, it's a good point. Obviously, they're not too worried about the way the rain, uh, Kelv, because uh, uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's not very heavy. No, they're just uh, getting on with the tractor grading as normal, and uh, riders ready to go, waiting patiently to get out there and and do their stuff. So clearly, not too much concern about the rain that's falling at the moment. Well, let's hope that's right, and they don't pay the price for it, where the rain comes in heavier earlier on, because these guys are ready and um, uh, they're keen to get on with it. Freddie Lindgren, well, he's in this championship, no question about it, finishing third last night, 16 big world championship points to his name, and he's riding strongly this evening, and uh, he'll be pushing on for the final, that's for sure. Janowski possibly looking to the heavens for the inspiration to win at home. Back-to-back -back Grand Prix, bit of drizzle on the front um, fork cover there, so the rain is still about. Uh, we won't want to hang around too long if we can avoid it, but um, riders can't be too much longer. Yeah, looks like we're going racing now, so uh, everything being switched on, fuel, chain oiler, goggles on, tear-offs on, focus on. No, water. Watering, my goodness. Water and it's raining. I find that, well, hopefully it's just a bit of tar packing. Yes. Uh, there isn't any water coming out of the back of it, but... Um, uh, yeah, they're just packing the outside a bit. Obviously, they're just making sure the conditions are exactly what they want for the last four races. But it is raining, and that does surprise me. You can see the rain coming down, and they have taken their time here. Um, I do hope that, that that doesn't prove to be problematic a little bit later on. Yep, so um, the pit gate is about to open. The riders are desperate to get out there, aren't they? Well, because it's raining. Yeah, Janowski riding well. Max Frick, six points from four rides, and Freddie Lindgren, nine points from four rides, starting with two straight wins, of course. And up to heat number 17 we go, and this is how it shapes up with Yanovsky on 10, Laguta and Lindgren on nine apiece, and then a group of riders on eight points apiece. With Smarslik, Everson, Woffenden and Chuganov. Mickelson on seven, and who would have thought Leon Madsen would be outside the top eight going into his final ride? Yeah, he's probably going to need a win. Yeah. And um, there's no doubt on sixth place, if we see how the points are allocated with the way you finish on the evening, 
the points you score through the heats will actually only determine where you finish and then you're allocated these championship points and uh, you can win and lose but making finals you see the jump in points by two uh, there's no question that is a massive benefit if you can be a consistent final maker yep so heat number 17 as we await broadcasters around the globe to join us Here's your lineup for heat number 17, the final round of races for all these riders to try and get into the semi finals. Matsianovsky's already there, no problem. The Wrocław rider, he's off the inside gate on 10 points. Max Frick goes off gate two in blue, gate three in white, Matty Zegar. And then it's fast Freddy Lindgren going off the outside gate in the yellow helmet colour. Has ridden nicely tonight, looks quick when he's in front. He's a tough competitor, he knows the lines. He does. He's got, he's got a lot of experience under his belt now, Frederick Lindgren. He has indeed. He's in his mid-30s, he's super fit and desperate to be world champion. Last night he had a bit of good fortune and he's right in the thick of the action again tonight. Yunovsky on 10 points, leading away. Max Frick, I tell you what, he's having a much better night. He'll be much, um, uh, much happier about the way things are going this evening than last night. Here we go, heat 17. Yeah, it's good to see new riders like Frick making an impact. Superb. Here we go then, heat 17 it is, and Frick's made a beauty off the inside gate. Yunovsky's there as well, and up the inside, Zegar. Lindgren's got to come back a long way through now. There's traffic there behind Yunovsky. Lindgren's at the back. Zegar second, Frick third, Freddie Lindgren at the back, but on nine points, he should be OK for a semi-final spot anyway. But what about this from Magic? Matsy Yanovsky. Yeah, the inside gates work to treat there. Once again, the trap preparation, the track is different than the previous race. It's been watered on the inside and slippery, and the outside gate was absolutely not the place to be. And Lingren, who has been in fine form so far this evening, cannot land a blow. Frick hanging on for second place. That's good news for him. Yanovsky once again has cleared off out in front. He's in a class of his own. Magic really producing the magic here this evening. Got to say, Phil for Lindgren here. He's been filled in, hasn't he, with... Uh, Completely. With Shale. With Shale. Yeah. And here's Janowski now on his way to victory and he's sailing into the semi-final with four wins under his belt from five rides. A Wrocław hero, of course, and a hero still in pool, where he won league titles with the Pool Pirates in the UK. But here, the local boy done good. Yeah. That's Matze Janowski. He's fast tonight, you know, that time is brilliant. Whatever they're doing there, whether it's all down to the tyre, I suggest it's not. Um, but certainly they have got a setup that is absolutely flying because uh, in tricky conditions there, he has produced a stunning win and a stunning time. Yep, super fast. Matt Sejanovski, 13 points. Laguts is on nine with a race in hand. Lingren is on nine and... He's OK, he should be OK for the semi-finals on nine. Uh, he'll be so frustrated there because all of a sudden conditions have changed in that trap break and uh, he just couldn't land a blow from the outside. It just wasn't um, quite the track that we'd witnessed previously. All the way around the inside, the riders there. Max Frick does nicely to um, push on here. Sagar there initially in second place, but the Australian works nicely. And uh, Freddie Lingon getting a little bit out of shape, but there's not, uh, there's nowhere else to ride. You've got to be on the inside in the first two laps here, otherwise you're just not going anywhere. Janowski, of course, from the inside gate, has dominated proceedings in 17. And Max Frick, that's what, well, Max Frick is enjoying a good night now. Eight after, points. Eight points, and well, he might have half a chance of making the semi-finals. We'll have to wait because it's so competitive for that. But yeah, for that it's man, congested on eight it points really now. is. Yeah, yeah. It might not be enough. But he won't uh, be in on seven tonight like no. Freddie was last night, that's so, for sure. Certainly not. But for 13 points, I, I, I get a feeling you are. So, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gives you that feeling. Well, it's just a bit of a long shot, you know, but just a hunch. But um, there's no <laughs> doubt that 13 points out of 15, um, you're well, well happy with that. Big race here, Nigel, for Wuffenden. Yep, Bartosz Marslik going off the inside. Then it's Leon Matson off two. He needs points, Leon, here. Mm. Gate number three in white, Mikkel Mikkelsen. Going off the outside. Number 108, the yellow helmet colour, mm -hmm. Ty Woffenden. A good ride last time out on a different bike. 
eight points from four rides of Woffenden, but a lot of pressure on Leon Madsen. Madsen win needs a win, really. He does, yeah. And um, we've got the reigning world champion going off the inside gate, and Smarsik, as the world champion, by the way, goes into this heat on the back of two straight wins. He does. He's improved his performance big time. Neil Madsen also has got better, and uh, Woffenden's happy with the setup now. Yep, away from the start. Smarsik's made a good one again. Now Woffenden is going to have to use all his racing brain here. Cuts up the inside and has already got the better of Seifertin off. They're three abreast down the back straight, and Woffenden's come through in a second. Great speedway here. The look how they're all bunched up. And uh, Smarsik holds the lead right now. Woffenden second. And Leon Madsen trying everything as Woffenden tries to pass Smarsik on the inside, super speedway! Fabulous speedway there, Leon Madsen running wide, the outside line is not working, and then Woofenden gets himself into trouble by trying to run wide. <laughs> Leon Madsen now is relegated back to third place, Smarslick's missing all the fireworks that are going on behind him, Mickelson's not out of it either. Here comes Leon Madsen once again round the outside, Mickelson now into third place, really good speedway, up the inside, Madsen! Yeah, Madsen threw into third, that'll put him on a seven. Woffenden is racing the wheels off that motorbike. He is ringing the throttle, yeah. getting every bit he can out of it. And he's ridden superbly to go on to ten points from second spot. But Bartosz Smarsling, three wins in his last three rides. He's in the semi-finals on 11, yeah. and he is back in business. Indeed he is, he looked good there. There was all sorts of shenanigans going on behind him. A question that the track changed there after the grading. He couldn't use the outside. Wolfenden tried it and went backwards. Leo Madsen tried it, did the same. Mickelson missing out. But for Schmarslick, three out of three in his last three outings. That's impressive and ominous for the rest. Mickelson misses the semis with that result in heat 18. Seven points. Madsen misses the semis. And a reminder, when you get in the final, that is where the new scoring system really gives you an advantage because it's not a one-point difference. You leapfrog by two points yeah, clear that, of semi-finalists. That's huge, and uh, making finals will give you a big boost. Uh, Madsen this time just not being able to generate the speed that we've seen him so often produce last year. Wuffenden riding so strongly here. And he came from the outside, had to work overtime to get right up alongside Smarslik at once. I thought for a moment he was going to be able to squeeze through here. It got awfully tight, but Smarslik just about recovers and uh, finally wins relatively comfortably the world champion with Leon Madsen also making Woofenden's life a little uncomfortable at times. But for uh, Ty Woofenden and, and Smarslik, they're through to the semi-finals relatively comfortably. But for Mickelson and Madsen, and Madsen in particular, that's a bit of a shock. Misses out this time of the semi-finals, he'll be gutted with that. Yes, absolutely. And Leon Madsen, who was absolutely flying last season. But you're quite right to make that point, Kelv, about the two operations he's had. Mm. And Bartosz Smarslik, I'm sure he'll be a lot happier now. Maybe a smile under that face covering, you never know. Well, not quite yet. He's, um, he's worked hard to get there, but he knows there's hard work to come. He wants two more outings tonight. He wants to win this Grand Prix for sure. Heat 19 and Jason Doyle goes off the inside gate, could do with a win. He's not going to make the semi-final, but he could do with a win. Mm. Uh, Antonio Limbach, one point tonight off the uh, gate number two position now. Then it's Artem Laguta, gate number three, the series leader. And Niels Christian Everson, who has ridden very, very well tonight. Eight points he's on, and he is off the outside gate in heat 19. So two races to go yeah. before we move into the semi-final stages of this uh, 2020 Betard Rotslav FIM Speedway Grand Prix of Poland, round at number two. Been some great racing, hasn't it? Yeah, there's been some super stuff, and Artem Laguta has provided some smashing performances so far this evening. Gate three for him here. Yeah, now, what can Doyle do off the inside? Laguta's nailed it from gate number three, but Doyle holding the line at the moment. Oh, Ooh, Doyle loses it, that shame. will allow Laguta to come through. Lindback's there as well. Niels Christian Everson is at the back. Doyle is going to try the inside switch on Laguta, but Laguta's got the speed, looks straight in front of him, oh, and he's gathering place. momentum, and yeah, all four of them so close together there. <laughs> Everson's come through into third, and that will do him nicely, and oh, now he's come through into second. Yeah. Wow, good ride from Everson. Doyle's got it all on here to try and 
uh, reclaimed second spot, but what about Laguta? Oh, it's just too fast for them, it's just cleared off again. And Doyle hasn't got any speed, the bike doesn't come out of the corner. Everson just was able to ride by him up the inside there, they were so frustrated with that. Everson hanging on for second place, that'll put him on 10, he'll be in the semi-finals, great effort from the Dane. But uh, Artem Laguta sweetly moving away out in front, he'll be on 12 points, he'll be delighted with that. Really looking good once again, a great start from gate three, the Russian flying! Absolutely brilliant from Artem Laguta. He really is going to be a serious, serious contender for the World Championship. His first individual world title. He's fired up now, he's ready to go. He's got oh, yeah, he points. wants it. He wants yeah. it again. Back-to-back -back victories, leading the World Championship. Wow! Yep, Everson second, Doyle third, and Lindback at the back. A miserable weekend, really, for Antonio. Finishes at the bottom of the pile again. Mm. And uh, Janowski riding superbly. And Lartem Laguta on 12, just a point behind Matze Janowski. He really nailed it from gate number three here. Had a lot of speed. He did indeed. And uh, Jason Dahl was right there alongside him. Bikes lifting, bikes set up quite clearly, quite extreme. Because it's reacting to everything he hits out there. Battling so hard. You see there, look all over the shop there, that kills his speed, you've got no chance then because they're going to come charging up the inside and Laguta does that and then he's under pressure from that moment on, Laguta moves away sweetly in front, Everson also is able to ride by Jason Doyle in previous seasons, you just would not see this, he's worked hard, he's in the grip and the other rider goes by him, the bike just not working quite as he would like, Everson though, his fortunes have turned right around this evening, 10 points from 5 outings into the semi-finals and showing some really good form here this evening. But for this man, well, Artem Laguta looking like a winner again tonight. And you've got to say that Janowski, and it's almost like deja vu, isn't it? You've got Janowski and Artem Laguta pretty much dominating the Grand Prix again tonight. Great effort from them, great yep. effort. Yep, heat number 20 is where it's at. What sort of Patrick Dudek will turn up for this one? Yeah. And what about Emil Saifudinov tonight? Three, Three points, he is not going to go through to the semi-finals. That's no. a huge disappointment. Emil, Leon, Patrick, all missing out. Chuganov on eight points, set for a semi-final appearance as a wild card. Really? Saifudinov gate number two in blue, Patrick Dudek gate three, and another high-profile rider, Martin Vasilik, off the outside, is not going to make it, so there's a lot of disappointed riders in this race. There is indeed, and Gleb Chuganov, when he was interviewed earlier on, he was asked whether, did you change your setup? He said, well, not too much, maybe a little bit in my head. And uh, quite clearly feeling... What's said for that? <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's produced uh, four second places so far, and he's on the verge of making his first Grand Prix semi-final. Yeah, heat number 20 it is, then into that first turn, and Chuganov's made a decent start. Oh! Wipes out Saifutinov. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. Commentator's curse there. Yeah, he's going to go for that. He will. And uh, he may just miss out as a consequence of that because he hasn't won a race. And that may just go against him. Red light on. Concern for Saifutinov as well here. Yeah, fingers uh, his, crossed. His, right. his night's gone from bad to worse, hasn't it, Emil? Yeah. Three points out of four and then finds himself literally having a real hard fall there in the first corner with uh, Gleb Chuganov just lifting maybe a small rut on the inside and just sitting back a bit early bike got away from him wow fingers crossed that the boys will be okay look quite nasty the way they went towards the fence there I know it's an air fence but it's the impact of landing on the ground and the impact of bikes as well well Emil is up Good news. Yep, great news indeed. Say it again. Chuganov makes a good start, and he's on the inside. He's got that side, he's sort of leaning back there. The bike lifts, he's out of control, and they've sort of hit each other, haven't they? I think yeah. they should be okay. They, they haven't got mixed up with the bikes too badly here. Well, hitting each other is better than hitting a machine, isn't it? Just look at it closely. That could have been a lot, lot worse, Kel. It Kelf. could have been a lot worse, you're right. And they are a touch fortunate there. I'm sure both of them will be OK. Lev Chuganov has probably blown his chance of a semi-final here, which is a shame for him, because um, he was looking really good, actually, tonight. 
But uh, for Emelside Food and Off, he'll be pleased when this meeting's over, I think. Yeah. It hasn't been his uh, finest hour. Let's get out of here. Yeah, Dudek. <laughs> what's Dudek on, oh. Nigel? Yeah, nasty one. But what's Dudek on? Five from four. So he needs a win. Will that be enough? A second Will that a win. be enough? It's all about count back then, Kelv. Mm. And confirmation then that Gleb Chuganov is disqualified from heat number 20. And Emil Saifudinov, good to see him walking back. That's the most important thing. Chuganov's getting a lift. Let's get some reaction from the 2012 world champion Chris Holder. He is down in our uh, pit area, of course, offering some views on the action. And we'll hear from Chris now as he speaks to our pit lane reporter, Kerry Blaw. Chris joining me quickly, just uh, look over that. Chris, that's really tough for Emil there. What happened with Gleb? I think uh, the last, you know, probably four or five races, that inside is uh, cutting up a little bit in both corners. And, um, yeah, first corner, you don't really have a lot of wheel spin going at the moment because you're just, you know, going from the start. And he just grabbed one of them ruts, and it's just you're a passenger then. There's not much he could have done. And luckily they got off it OK. And, you know, I think the guy off gate four missed them just. But, uh, yeah, it's never nice. Yeah, they're both up and walking back into the pits now. How much, obviously, Emil's having quite a good night. How much will that affect Emil as he just sees into this? Uh, I don't think it'll affect him. Um, I don't know if he's having a great night, though. You know, he's, he needs the points, you know, obviously. for I'm not sure what he's looking at for the semis or whatnot, but um, it won't affect him. That's, we know that every time, so that's just an unfortunate thing, and he walked away, no worries, so he'll be fine. All right, thanks so much, Chris. No problem. Well, it's good to see both of them up and about. Um, I think... Um, you know, Emil's night has not been his uh, greatest night. He only has just the three points. So um, uh, even if he wins the rerun, he's not going to make the finals tonight, the semi-finals. And uh, con uh, concern for Martin Magutu, of course, rightly so. Uh, no fellow countryman. Fellow countryman, of course, they had uh, that wonderful night here two years ago in the Speedway of Nations when um, Russian won their first gold medal on shale they've won loads on ice plenty plenty on the ice they dominate ice racing oh and uh we see that often nowadays with a bit of a rut around the inside you used Back to see it all the time years ago at cardiff yeah well they until did. they got the track absolutely spot on yeah like just grips there and you can't do anything about it it's a shame for chuganoff i know he's he's the guilty partner here but the fact is is that uh last night we're touching the tapes in his first race and then tonight, with this exclusion, it's probably going to cost him a semi-final. And um, the way he's ridden tonight, do you know what? He, he, he probably deserves to make the semi-final, but uh, he might just miss out because he hasn't won a race. So count back is going to be hugely important. A um, bit more uh, time. And I'm going to say, you know, with Dudek, Dudek started so good tonight. Five out of five out of his first two. And then all of a sudden, no, uh, no points from the next two. He needs a win. Might be enough. Might be enough. We'll have to wait and see. But um, for this man, he needs to go. It's all about pride now for Emil, if he can win his last ride and then go on to Gorjov in a couple of weeks' time and pick it up again. I'm surprised because he rode well last night and looks like he was really flying. He's been really good all season, so it is a little bit of a shock and a surprise to me that he hasn't had the pace this evening. They haven't, uh, haven't got it right tonight for whatever reason. So for Gleb Chuganov, teammates with Woofie here, of course, uh, a little bit of concern. A popular guy, actually, Gleb. Yep. He's a really popular guy. Now, Patrick Dudek, if he wins this race, he'll move on to eight points. Yeah. And, and he has got two race wins under his belt as well. And that'll do him. That would put him above Gleb Chuganov. Yeah, so it might just be that, um, you know, Dudek could actually relegate Chuganov uh, to missing out again. So it'll be interesting to see what, we, uh, what happens. And that race win for... Me, uh, for um, Max Frick in his second ride, that will help him on the count back as well. Yeah, so Chuganov just with the four second places, it might not be his evening, um, but uh, he hasn't done himself any harm over the, these two nights. He's, um, I think he got seven. What did he get last night? I think he got six or something last night, and uh, he picked up seven world championship points, but I think he scored six on the evening. And uh, tonight with eight, well, uh, he's done better than some big names, I'll tell you that. So he's done OK. But uh, for this man, Dudek, pressure on if he can win with yeah, two race wins prize. to his name. Yep. All of a sudden, 
well, look what happened last night with Freddie Lingwin. Well, he, he could came, qualify on eight and then get 20 points for winning the meeting. Exactly right. So he's far from out of it. So with the point scoring system we've got now, even if you've really had a disappointing couple of races, you can still turn it around uh, in four laps. So um, still plenty to race for here for Dudek. Vasilik, uh, he's had a tough night. It's not for him this evening. And Emil Saifutinov racing for pride. It really has been a difficult evening for him. Thing is, Kelv, it's hard to see past Janowski or Laguta as the winner of this meeting, isn't it? It's going to be a shock if somebody else wins apart from those one well, of those you're, two. You're, you're, you're right, but all I would say is that they've both dropped points tonight. You know, Janowski dropped two in one race and Laguta ran a last. So it is possible, but they are the four men, no question about that. Um, but but um, certainly Janowski and Laguta look head and shoulders above the rest. Three riders only, no rider off the inside. Saifudinov goes off two, Dudek off three, and Martin Vasilik going off the outside in the yellow helmet colour, only three points there. Mm. Top, top riders here who have struggled to land a blow tonight, really. Bit of a surprise. Dudek looked to have uh, sorted whatever his problems were last night with his opening couple of rides, but this is heat number 20, second time of asking, and Saifudinov's made a beauty off gate number two. He's picked himself up from that, an awkward-looking crash. Now Dudek is in second spot, needs to pass him, charges on the inside run. Saifudinov holds his line, Vasilik's not done yet, he's trying the outside run. Dudek really putting the pressure on Saifudinov, he knows it's win or bust for the semi-final, Sir Patrick Dudek, but Emil Saifudinov is riding a nice line here, Cal. He has, and all of a sudden we're looking at a man that's sort of rejuvenated, he's bounced against the dirt, and it's sort of bumped him into Just what he needed. Just what he needed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he'd agree with you, but there we are. But no, there's no doubt, and it's going to cost Dudek the chance of a semi-final this evening. Vasilik again struggling for pace, he's back in third place with Saifudinov, pride on the line for him, the Russian rocket. Looking like his normal self here, a little oh. bit too late. Dudek coming strong, very strong in the last uh, last half of the race. Yeah, super stuff. Oh. Emil has almost lost it. Does that allow Dudek through? No. Oh, it's so tight on the line. Not quite, not quite. Don't think he's quite got there. He knows it as well. He's shaking his head. Not quite. He's shaking his head, Dudek. Great effort, but Emil Saifudinov well, nearly... just losing control of the bike there. Yeah, nearly threw it away in the last corner. I'd sort of given him the win, really, but um, uh, he made hard work of it again. Just see it there running wide and... Uh... Dudek then also lifting as well, and that probably cost him because he just couldn't quite keep the throttle wide open. But um, uh, Saifutinov winning by about a half a length of the bike there. Vasilik back in third place. But um, both, all those three riders will be disappointed with their evening's work, and they'll be looking yeah, forward... Yeah, because they're better than that, aren't they? Absolutely. They're better riders than that, so... Sure. Matejanovski leads going into the semi-finals on 13. We know that Artem Laguta's on 12. We know that Bartosz Marzik's on 11. We know that Iverson and Wuffenden are on 10 points each. The semi-finalists will be confirmed officially by the FIM very shortly. Well, it took a little bit of time, but uh, we got there in the end. And uh, Emil Saifutinov, who... Uh, comes up the winner here I, he looked like he had it all under control but then Dudek to, to his credit came on strong at the back end of the race here and Emil coming through the last corner very nearly threw it away with a mistake or a lapse of concentration um, but um, all three of these riders have had a disappointing night and they will be wanting to forget it and move on to Gorjov as soon as possible um, more of a surprise that it's a disappointing night for Saifutinov when he's been in such a rich vein of form all year long for Lezno, and he looked really good uh, last night as well. So he'll be um, he'll be particularly disappointed, but um, I'm sure he won't let it daunt him too much. But here we see late in the race, looking like he's got it under control. Bike oh, just straightens up a fraction, runs wide, and Dudek thinks, oh, I've got half a chance, but can't quite get there. So Saifutin off a touch fortunate in the end. But um, those three boys, they'll be packing their bikes up now and heading their way back home. While we uh, await for the FIM to confirm the top eight this evening. Yep, Janowski, 13. And uh, as we say, Artem Laguta, 12. Uh, you then have Bartos Marslik, the reigning champion, on 11. You have Ty Woffenden on 10. Niels Christian Everson on 10. Uh, so there's the top five. We know that for sure. Freddie Lindgren is on nine. 
So that's the top six. What, what did Frick end on eight? Frick ended up on eight points and he got a win. So he's going to be in. He will be in the semi-finals. Chuganov might just make it, you know. He has. He's just crept in. Wow. Frick and Chuganov in the semi-finals. Oh, that's a good bit of fortune for him. But just look at Dudek. Seven points. If he'd have won that race, mm. he'd have been into the semi-finals on count back. Better, better stats than Frick or Chuganov. He would have had two race wins. Costly race for Patrick Dudek. If is a big word. It is. And uh, Emil Saifutinov, look at Doyle on three. That's a poor night for him. Yeah, but, disappointment. Um, disappointment. For, but, but for Gleb Chuganov, you know, in some ways, he deserves the semi-final. He rode well last night, missed out, but the, the exclusion. And he's had a bit of touch of good fortune tonight. And uh, he will be into the semi-finals. And that's good news. But uh, two good lineups coming up here. Be interesting to see what gate picks the, the boys go for, particularly the top scorers in Janowski and Laguta. We had a semi final last night that was to die for. I mean, semi final number one last night was just incredible. And uh, it was, um, you know, Saifutinov and Smarslik missing out. But um, that was a really strong lineup. But uh, nonetheless, we are going to see some. Uh, the next three races will determine the winner. And could Artem Laguta win back-to-back -back Grand Prix? That really would have put him in a commanding position in the World Championship. Just a little bit, 40 points from two meetings. Happy days. And that hasn't happened. The first two rounds hasn't been won by the same rider since 2007, Nicky Pedersen. Wow, there you go. And he went on to win the World Championship that year. So, yes, he got off to a good start and he saw himself through to World Championship. And Artem Laguta, if he can do it, and already he hasn't sort of had, uh, you know, the second night blues, has he at all? No. He really has come out firing on all cylinders because it could have worked the other way. He could have been so happy last night to actually refocus this evening. May have been a problem for him, but it hasn't been. He's been, uh, he's been terrific. Well, we'll get the uh, pick for the uh, gate positions very soon mm. from the boys for the first semi-final. And it's Matsey Janowski. That's top scorer, and he'd gone straight for the inside gate. Different from last night. They were yeah. going for two and three last night, so gate one is the, the preferred one. Second up is Niels, uh, Il, Niels Christian Everson. Now, this is a big move for him. Desperate last night. Gate three for him in the semi-final this evening. Good stuff. Yeah, he's had a good night, Niels, and it's great to see as well. Pleased for him. Yep. Here we go. Freddie Lindgren, gate number two. He'll be pleased with that, you know. Yeah, he'll he can be, make that work, can't he? He can. He, he can, can make that he'll work. He'll be chuffed sure. with that. And gate four is um, Frick. Max Frick. Good to see him in the semi final as well. Yes, it is. Permanent rider. So it's good to see the younger rider gaining a confidence and making his mark. And the Aussie boys, well, he's uh, flying the flag for Australia this evening. Yeah, he's, he got through to a final last year. He, mm. um, this is his 11th Grand Prix now, Max. Um, so in the relatively early stage, it's only his second uh, Grand Prix as a fully-fledged GP rider. So anyway, second semi-final. Laguta. Will he go red, gate one, like Magic no, did? No, three. he's gone three, right, OK. OK. That's what he took last night, wasn't it? Yeah. Likes that. Yep. I think he won his first race from there. We've got Smarslik now, gate, th gate one. Straight for gate I'll tell one, you I'll have what, a bit of that. I'll tell you what, I bet he's delighted. <laughs> delighted with that. It's tight. Two. Good lineup again here. Cool. Gate semi final two. A bit like last night's semi final one. It is. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So Gleb chugging off. Yeah. I'm not sure he wants to be in the semi final now. <laughs> <laughs> Smart Slick Muffin and Laguta. <laughs> Good wow. luck. Good luck. Gleb chugging off. Great Fair experience for him. Oh, though. It is. Yeah, yes. Brilliant stuff for him. So. Yeah, brilliant. And Smarslik, Wolfie, Artem Laguta and Gleb Chuganov in semi-final number two. Two very tasty-looking races coming up. Indeed, they are. Two semi-finals to really relish. How many people you reckon in? About 25%? 30%. 25% is a lot of empty seats. A lot of yeah. empty seats. Yeah, I think, I think they're enjoying themselves and they're delighted to be here, of course. I'm Quite sure. right, too. Privileged yeah, in the sporting absolutely. landscape at the moment. Still a warm evening, most people in short sleeve order. Excellent. So that's nice. Uh, late summer warmth here in Wrocław. Yeah, well, I think we're going to hear from uh, our expert pundit in the pits.
Chris Holder, the 2012 world champion, very soon. So the boys for the first semi-finals getting ready, but let's get some analysis from Chris Holder. Chris Holder back with me now. Now let's look at these semis, Chris. Uh, Magic Niels at Freddie Max. So out of that uh, semi, we're probably looking at Magic and Freddie. They've got uh, a red gate and blue gate consecutively. Are they logical choices, do you think? I think, you know, after the track grade, for sure, the inside would probably be a bit favourable. And uh, Magic's making good starts. And, um, you know, he's been out after the track grade all night, so he knows what to expect. And But you never know, like, them two are going to be going hard for the first corner. and. You know, it depends what they do there. You know, the outs you can't rule out the outside either. It's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, and then looking at the second semi, Artem picked the white gate. An unusual choice or right choice? He's confident. He's making great starts, and um, it's tough when it comes to a semi. You know, like gate three might be the best, but to leave two good guys inside you is a big ask too. And um, he's obviously confident that he can do it. So we'll see. Indeed, he did it off the final last night. So let's go to our first semi. Yeah, it's quite a lineup as well here with Janowski, Lindgren, Everson, and Frick. It's great stuff here. Been a hugely competitive night once again. And the first semi final coming up very shortly. Second semi final, Sparsley, Wuffenden, Laguta, and Chuganov. Can't wait for these semi finals on the way next. Semi-final one in Wroclaw then, and the 2020 better Wroclaw FIM Speedway Grand Prix of Poland. It's Matt Sajanowski off the inside, the local hero. Fast Freddie Lindgren off two, Niels Christian Everson off three. Great to see him in the semi-final. And Max Frick going off the outside gate in the yellow helmet colour, the Australian rider. Janowski, though, absolutely fantastic tonight. Tops the score chart going into the semi-finals. Yeah, 13 points has ridden brilliantly this evening. And um, it will be interesting to see if gate one proves to be the best one. After the track grade, quite possibly will be. And uh, once he's hit the front, there really has been no stopping for him. Max Frick on the outside with a freshly prepared track. It'll be interesting to see if the outside works from there. Might not, but if they drift wide, could cut back. Here we go, semi-final number one. Yep, here we go. Big race coming up, Janowski off the inside gate has made a beauty. Wow. No major surprise there. Now Lindgren is in second place. Can anybody stop that front two? The man at the back is Max Frick, and now he's charging hard to try and get the better of Niels Christian Everson. But Magic Janowski looking superb and set to sail through to his second successive final of the Speedway Grand Prix after being here last night and qualifying and finishing second. He's absolutely tearing this semi-final apart. Janowski from Lindgren from Everson. Yeah, it's, um, it's it's disappointing for me. I'm sorry to say this, but they've overwatered the track again and they've completely nullified the outside of the track. No chance for Frick or Everson to land a blow here. Of course, Janowski's flying and he's going great guns, but he's cleared off in front. Just look at the dirt on third and fourth. And that is, it's really slippy and that's a shame. But for Janowski and Lindgren, it's looking like they're going to be finalists. And for the home favourite, Janowski, wow, brilliant ride. Janowski with a clear view ahead of him. Fantastic ride for Matze Janowski. Freddie Lindgren is in the final as well, so that's the second successive final for those two riders, Matze Janowski and Niels Christian Everson. And in the other semi-final now, Smarslik, Wolfenden, Laguta and Chuganov coming up. 61.9 was Magic's winning time. Uh, but a, a clear run in front of him and made it count. He was super quick there. He was. And he's into the final again. Indeed he is, and he's been exemplary all night. He's just dropped two points from six outings, so he's having a great night. Yeah, he's into his 18th final of his career and his 59th GP tonight. Yeah. Lindgren in second place, and that now means that Freddie is into his 37th final. Uh, for Freddie Lindgren. Tell you what, no, it's no, working that, out for Freddie. Stat. That's the wrong stat. It's his 28th final. I it's do working out for Freddie, isn't it? You know, yeah. he had a bit of good fortune last night, but he's battled hard and he's made it by merit tonight, that's for sure. We see it again, the tapes are up. Uh, Janowski, well, he's won the race already. I mean, he's two bites clear going in the first corner. But the boys on the outside, there's no grip there. And uh, they just can't get in the race. And that's a shame because... Um, uh, they can't really use most of the track in the first semi-final. It'll come right as the, the laps go on, the second semi-final, particularly the final. The final, I think the track will really come to them. 
but um, you can see there. Oh wow! You can see there where the water's gone down for the sec for the first semi-final. It's just slippy, and uh, you just can't use all of it. So that's a shame. But for Janowski and Lindgren, they're delighted. They're in the final. Yep, here we go with the second semi-final now, Artem Laguta. He is going to go off gate number three here. He's had another great night. Bartosz Marslik, the champion, off the inside gate. Then Ty Wuffen and the three times champion, gate number two in blue. Artem Laguta going off gate number three, the Russian. And off gate number four, Gleb chugging off the wild card, who sneaks into the semi-final on that eight-point score which was enough after Patrick Dudek failed to win Heat 20. That would have put Dudek in with two race wins. Well, can Smarslik make the final tonight? He's ridden so well in his last three outings, winning all three of them. There's no doubt that he really has turned his fortunes around after two third places. Wuffenden has ridden really hard, needs a big performance now. Laguta, the favourite, coming out of gate three. Is that a risk? Is that the right place to go from now? Here we go, semi-final number two in Wroclaw. And uh, Smarslikov, the inside gate, has made a good one. Look at Wuffenden here. Wuffenden's gone high and wide into the dirt. Now he's going to try and put pressure on Smarslik. He really is going deep here. Smarslik tries to go wide. Wuffenden with a chop up the inside. What a ride from Ty Wuffenden. Now Smarslik's going to come back for more. Good speedway here as Chuganov loses it. And Laguta comes through at the back. And now this battle up top is Smarslik and Wuffenden going head to head, Kelv. They are indeed. They really are having a go out in front. Smarslik is determined to get the better of the three-time world champion. Now Wuffenden hits the front. Smarslik replaces the compliment. What a race we've got going on out in front. Wuffenden coming back for more. He's going to squeeze him up as they go over the start finish line. <laughs> Smarslik just about hanging on. Wuffenden up the inside now. He will not be denied. Now pulls away down the back straight. What a semi-final this is. Yeah, and that was good going into turn three. He's gone on the inside. He's closed the door and Wuffenden hangs on <laughs> under severe pressure from Bartosz Marslik. A magnificent, magnificent speedway race. Well, Artem Laguti misses out. Gate three did not work and uh, found himself relegated to the back for a long period of time there. What a race it was out in front. Wuffenden and Smarslik. That was proper speedway. I dare say it was speedway out of the top draw, Nigel. <laughs> Go on, lad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it, love it. And Bartosz Smarslik into the 25th final of his Grand Prix career and his 50th appearance in the Grand Prix tonight. Mm. So it's quite a final lineup, and oh, the, yeah. home, the home fans are jubilant because Janowski is a Wrocław rider, Ty Wuffenden is also a Wrocław rider, and this is a sensational race. Well, I've got to say that uh, taking gate number number three and you're giving two world champions the inside two gates was brave, and it <laughs> didn't quite work out for Artem here. But uh, this racing out in front between these two. Uh, this meant something, I tell you. This really did mean something, because really and truly, Smarslik didn't need to ride this hard, but he wanted to beat Wuffenden. There's no doubt in my mind that it was a psychological warfare going on here, no doubt about it. Wuffenden coming out on top, showed great class here, and these two boys really put on a fine show. Proper speedway, top draw speedway. They cleared off out in front. Artem Laguta threw in third place. He'll be disappointed after winning last night. But still a strong showing from the Russian. But for these two lads out in front, I'd like to see a repeat of this in the final. Could be quite special. Well, it's a high-risk sport. There's a bit of trust involved between those two boys. The well, way they're the two best riders in the world. Yeah, they're throwing you know? the bikes at each other. Yeah. And there's got to be a bit of racing trust between them, Kel. Oh, there was. It was hard but fair. And I tell you what, Wuffenden was right up for it there. He knew what was going on. He looks remarkably calm, but I tell you inside, I bet he's whirring away. But that was uh, that was just an indication of what it's all about out there. Tremendous. Really enjoyed that race. Been some terrific speedway over the last two nights. And it was fantastic. Really, really good. Tremendous race. Absolutely mm. terrific. Well, they were in a class of their own. No, Laguta couldn't land a, a blow there. He couldn't get away from gate three and uh, gates one and two proving to be the right place at the right time. We saw it in semi-final one. I mean, Janowski was so far clear off gate one going into the first corner in semi-final one. The race was almost over 
by the time he'd got there. But so uh, Janowski, Smarslik and Wuffenden, I tell you, that's quite a line-up and, uh, and Lingren as well. But Janowski just seems to have a bit more speed than everybody else right now, don't you? And I think if he hits yeah. the front, I think he'll win it. Yes, I don't think anybody will pass him if he does hit the front. And a win in a second on consecutive nights, I mean, that'll be quite handy. That'd be 38 points. 38 points, points absolutely. Mm, happy days. Lindgren on 16 points, he's mm. in the final, and Wuffenden on 14, he's in the final as well. So, yeah, so, yeah final, making finals is what it's all about. Wuffenden said it yesterday, didn't he, when he was, you know, his focus was to build and make sure he didn't have to win every race. And tonight, whatever they did, they changed their setup midway through the, uh, the, the meeting, and it's proved to be the right way to work, and they are flying now. Um, but um, favourite for me for the finals has to be Janowski. He has been superb, but uh, you can never rule out riders like Smarslik and Wuffenden. If they've got half a chance, they'll take it. The rain stopped. Pleased about that. Mm. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the person that has to climb those steps to change the bulbs in the floodlights. I'd want to be paid an awful lot of money. Well, I just, I just don't like heights. No, I, I, not all the money in China, mate. I wouldn't be up there. Um, but, um, uh, no, they are very high indeed, and they're fabulous lights. Look how well lit the stadium it's is. brilliant, yeah. There's no dark patches on the track there, I can assure you. No, that's right. But, um, no, patiently waiting now for what is going to be a fabulous final, I'm sure. And uh, no. they're, um, they're, uh, they're not quite as good as my old Subutio floodlights. <laughs> <laughs> but they are impressive. Yeah, yeah. Close yeah. but no cigar. Eh? The trouble is the batteries used to go regularly on Subutio <laughs> floodlights. Yeah, they didn't have Duracell in those days, no. did they? No. Other batteries yeah. are available. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, we're waiting for the lineup. Here, Here we, we go, go. Janowski, got to go gate one, surely. Well, he did it in the uh, semi-final. Yeah. yeah. Here we go, Janowski off the inside. Yep. Never in doubt, really, was it? Never in doubt. He was just teasing yeah. us. He was. Here's Ty. Yeah. Gate two. <laughs> no. Gate two, yeah. He's, Had he's, to be. It as well. he's just teasing us as well. <laughs> Had to be gate two. Gate three for Smarslick, yeah. And gate four for Lindgren. So I'll tell you what, Freddie from the outside, you know, could do something out in the dirt. Yeah, he'll have to have a bit of good fortune. If the track's dried enough, Nigel, you might be able to slingshot right around the outside. If not, it's got to be the turn back. Uh, because in the semi finals, the inside line was working well on the first corner. But um, Wufferden, I think, will be more than happy to have gate two. And Smarslik, well, gate three, mm, he's going to have to do something. We saw with Artem Lagutu, he found it difficult from there, and he's probably been making some of the best starts. But uh, Janowski off the inside, he's going to take some beating, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so um, got the final to come. Fans really enjoying it here. Finalists being announced in the stadium, which is uh, yep. getting a great reaction. Of course, Janowski is going to be a fan favourite. So is Wuffenden. He rides here, of course. But with Janowski being Polish and living here, of course, they're going to be partisan behind him and they're uh, very loyal to their own. And uh, they've been well entertained. These have been two smashing meetings to start the series. They yeah, really it's been have. great. No, yeah, it's and Gorzhov's a good track in a couple of weeks as well, Kel. Oh, the it? venues are great. Yeah. The venues are terrific. And the, the racing will be really good all the way through to Torren in October. There's no doubt about that. Um, uh, but uh, you just sense that they are just... This place could get very excited if Janowski wins the final, won't it? I think there'll be uh, one or two people getting very excited. I think he already is, that fella. Yeah. Mm. Strange, isn't it, you know, when uh, crowds are allowed back into football grounds and they're going to be told, please don't shout and cheer. <laughs> really? In the UK, yeah. Really? That's the talk. Please don't cheer, please don't shout and sing. So what's the point of going back in the stadium Just then? Just got to sit there and watch the football. And... You can do that at home. Yeah. OK. Anyway. So that's moving swiftly let's on. Let's not go too in-depth about that, No, Carl. that seems ridiculous. Anyway, so <laughs> um, uh, I'm pleased that they're shouting and screaming here because so it makes I. a bit of atmosphere. And uh, uh, Janowski just uh, deep in thought, focusing, just trying to maintain his, uh, his concentration because uh, he's got four laps to prove himself a winner again on the Grand Prix stage. He's done it before. He's won on big nights as well. Winning in Cardiff is a big one. Yeah. Having that on your CV, I tell you, that's pretty special. Teammates, a wry smile, but um, 
They're going to go head to head here. There's not going to be too much love lost when they get to the tapes, that's for sure. They're chasing the ultimate uh, prize, the world championship. It's what they all want. There's two in the race that have done it. There's a reigning champion, a three-time world champion. Brilliant. And two men that are desperate to do it. Lingren's been trying a long time. yanoski has been around a while as well. What a lineup, Nigel. Yeah, superb. Can't wait for this. A fitting finale, mm. I think it's fair to say. Here in the Olympic Stadium of Wrocław. Just awaiting the clearance for the uh, pit gate to open. The boys just want to get on with it, don't they, Kelly? Yeah, they're keen. And they is a bit of a delay. I don't think there's been any track grading this time. Generally, there isn't prior to the uh, final. But there's something going on that we can't quite see there. So the goggles are coming off. Phil Morris is there. The race director just um, not quite sure what's going on. We can't no. see it. We're not focusing on the track. We're just... Don't know. Not sure. So, anyway, <laughs> they're having to be patient, so are we, and so is everybody at home. So, um, apologies for that. But, Maybe they're um, just giving the crowd chance to go and get the hot dog or a beer. Well, you never know. A bit of revenue can come in handy these days. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, uh, here we go. They're not bad, the hot dogs at Rotslav, actually. Not too bad. Tell you what, sometimes in Poland they can repeat. They can be they, a they little bit. <laughs> they can repeat on you. <laughs> when you're not accustomed to them. No, they are character building say yes. that but yes. here we are now guys having to be a bit patient this is not what you want you want to get on with it you know you've battled hard there's some tough customers out there Lingwin probably the toughest he's yeah. been putting himself about the last couple of years he's so keen to be world champion rode his luck last night forced his way into the final finished third that was a great effort from coming from nowhere He's in this championship. He's got two consecutive, consecutive finals. Oh, the two minutes time allowance is now on. Well, that's all well and good. Yeah, I don't know you why know, they've been waiting there for three or four minutes. We don't know why that was. But <laughs> uh, uh, patience is a virtue. Not one of mine, unfortunately, but no, there we are. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> no, it's not. I, I, I'll fess up to that one. I'm not patient. No, I know. Um, uh, I think I might have had a word to say. Anyway, the boys are at tapes, and this man is the favourite. And he's ridden superbly well. And uh, there's no doubt that um, uh, it's going to be a tear-up, that's for sure. Ty Woffenden, 11 GP finals. Artem Laguta didn't make it, of course. Yunovsky in his 18th GP final. Freddie Lindgren in his 28th. Bartosz Schmarklik, Schmarklik in his 25th GP final. Plenty of experience here. Matsayanovsky on the inside, Ty Woffenden on two, Bartosz Smarsnik off three, Freddie Lindgren off four. The points scored so far are now irrelevant because whatever happens, 20 for the winner, 18 for second, 16 for third, and the man who finishes last gets 14 Grand Prix points. So the points accumulated so far are irrelevant. That said, Matsayanovsky has got six wins out of his seven rides. He has, and, uh, you know, he... Uh... He'll be gutted if he doesn't win. He is the fourth man coming into the final, but um, still got to do it. But 14 points for coming fourth is still no poor return. Woofenden got that last night. He'll be looking to improve on that. He will want to win here. He'll want to lower the colours of Smarslik, but he'll also want to get the better of his teammate as well, Janowski. Um, uh, he won't want Janowski stealing the limelight here. And they're uh, both very popular here, Woofenden and Janowski. No question about that, but uh, there's no... The, uh, you know, the championship on the line, and Woffenden will want to win and get himself right back in contention. Smarslick, the champion, hunched over the handlebars. Here we go for the final. Yep, great lineup. Which way is it going to go here? Green light on, and away from the start. Janowski's made a good one. Woffenden is going right here, and now that allows Lindgren the opportunity to sneak up the inside. Woffenden's got speed. Now he's going to try the outside run on his better uh, Rotslav teammate. And Janowski holding the lead, Smarslik is third, Lindgren's gone to the back, but Matze Janowski looking superb, wins this, he'll be on 38 Grand Prix points and will be the new leader of the championship. Woffenden, wheel in the air, his time wasted, get it back down, boy. Done him, done Janowski a favour, it killed his momentum and now he's clamped Smarslik on the line, Janowski's got it. That lifting down the back straight from Woffenden really put his pay to his chances tonight. 
pretty much gifted the win to Janowski, barring mechanical failure. Looking good, made the start, down the back straight. Looked a little bit nervous, but he's pulling away. Smarslik hanging on in third. Freddie Lingwood relegated to fourth. But Janowski, the night is going to belong to him, Nigel. It's going to be his seventh Grand Prix win of his career. He's going to take up the lead in the World Championship. 38 points now for Matze Janowski. Wuffen and Banks, 18 points for his second place. So he moves on to 32 points. He's in the title hunt, all right. Make no mistake about that. But the local hero has won the meeting. He grew up in Wroclaw. He's loved all around the area. And look what it means to the fans. Matze Janowski, so popular at Pool Pirates. He's had spells at Kingsland Stars and Swindon Robins as well. A magnificent performance. Yeah. And great to see Wolfgang congratulating scenes. him. Class act. Yeah, class Both act. riders. Both riders indeed. Of Roslav 1 2. The fans are loving it, Nigel. And I tell you what, what a performance tonight from Matze Janowski. Only dropped two points in seven outings. Outstanding. There is a reaction from family in the crowd as well. His mother quite clearly overjoyed to see his son have second place last night and come through with the win this evening. Wonderful scenes and uh, great that people in the stands can enjoy this moment with him. What a dream come true. It is a dream come true. And can we see now Janowski really push on to uh, try and win his first world championship. He's been in this position before and has then slipped away. But for Janowski tonight, a wonderful performance. 20 Janowski, 18 Wuffenden, 16 for Smarslik, puts him on 27 Grand Prix points. Lindgren on 14, puts him on 30. So a productive night. For Freddie Lindgren oh, and yeah. for Smarslik, you Far know. from out of it, and they've certainly, the making finals is going to be what it's all about. Replay, here we go. What a start. He's hunched over. Wuffen and dropped the clutch as well. None of them missed it. They all wanted it, and Lindgren decided not to go around the outside. The best move, and he just about gets himself into third base place, but Smarslik works hard. At this stage, Janowski's got away, but then Wuffen and comes on strong. Really strong. You can see him building the speed. Moves to the outside, and I thought for a moment, he was going to have half a chance at hitting the front. But as they go down the back straight for the second time, he lifts. And that really does kill his momentum and probably gives the... Uh, that's the moment. That's the moment that really hands the victory to Janowski and means that Wuffenden can't win. And then it's all about hanging on for second place. In actual fact, when you see it in slow motion, it's all about hanging on to the bike. <laughs> um, but uh, a wonderful bit of motorcycle skills from Wuffenden. But a great moment and an emotional moment for Matze Janowski th tonight. Here's the standings, Janowski 38, Wuffenden 32. Didn't see that for very long, but anyway, there we are. Matze Janowski celebrating mm. uh, on one wheel, and why not enjoy the moment, Matze Janowski, on his, uh, in his own backyard. I hope he's got tomorrow off so he can have a real good time with his family, because, um, as I say, a local uh, boy and uh, is very popular here and uh, fully deserved win. He has ridden superbly over the last two nights. Second last night, winner tonight. That is what dreams are made of, and what a wonderful way to start this year's championship for him and for the whole series. It really has been two super meetings. Congratulations to all involved, Nigel, because so good to see World Championship Speedway out there and at such a high calibre of racing. It's been great. Yeah, it's, it's just such a good feeling to get the Grand Prix back up and running and... You know, to be shouting and you imagine those people not being, about being, being, being encouraged not to shout. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Passion, sound, enjoying the moment. And um, these people are delighted to see a home victor. Yeah, such a lovely fellow as well, Matze Janowski. What Very, very polite. Every time he sees us around the Grand Prix circuit, he makes a point of coming over and yeah, saying hi. Top man. Obviously, he knows us from the UK anyway, but such a great guy. He used to turn up at British meetings in an Arsenal football shirt, I recall. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, but, no, it's been a, a great performance from him, and he'll be uh, desperate to try and keep this form going in Gorjov, so congratulations to him. Well, I don't need to say your name because they are chanting it for you. Congratulations. It's the win you wanted. It's the win they wanted.
Yeah, you know, um, that was an amazing night. Uh, thank you to my team because they've done uh, amazing work today. Um, it's really hard to uh, race on your home track, but uh, today I feel uh, so much, uh, so much uh, focus in, in my head, and uh, I was I was ready and prepared for the for the hard racing. So thank you for, for all the fans. Dziękuję bardzo wszystkim. Kurde. To było niesamowite, bo tak naprawdę wyjeżdżałem i cały czas słyszałem, jak, e, jak skandujecie moje nazwisko. Nie, szczerze mówiąc, z mojej perspektywy nie do końca mi to ułatwiało, ale, ale dziękuję wam bardzo. Byliście niesamowici. Congratulations, Magic. Yeah. Dziękuję, dziękuję. Yep, well they do. It is a request that they speak English in the... Uh in the interview of course but when you're in your home backyard it's inevitable you're going to slip into your native tongue and address well, that, your home that, fans of course that's what they want Absolutely. as well so um, you can't blame him for that but fantastic performance from all three this evening Wuffenden certainly giving himself a great opportunity for a fourth world championship Janowski looking for his first Smarslik battling hard to try and retain it um, three quality riders on the top of the box there this evening but the night belongs to that man a night he will remember for an awful long time, I would suggest. Yes, congratulations. Matze Janowski taking the adulation and the congratulations of the crowd here. Mm. Fantastic performance, and he really does deserve it. So that's what, um, six wins out of seven tonight? Yeah, yeah, he just dropped two points. So, you know, um, got to say, he scored 20 World Championships in the old format. He would have scored, what, uh, 19. So, yeah. actually, he's benefited from the new system tonight. Um, so, he won't care about that. 38 World Championship points is uh, what he's got. And that's the important factor after the first two rounds. Well, congratulations to Matej Janowski. We had a Russian winner last night. We got a Polish home winner tonight. It really has been a spectacular performance from him. Two nights, second last night, a winner tonight. That really is uh, very special indeed. He'll be very proud with that. And quite clearly the reaction in the crowd with his family, they are also too overjoyed. Very emotional scenes we saw there, which is wonderful. And of course, um, uh, now the spoils uh, come to the victors. Good performance, Nigel. One of his best, I think. And can you believe Artem Laguta, who was rampant last night, mm. is now fifth in the World Championship took, after two rounds. Took, took the wrong gate, got caught yeah. out by conditions, actually. Track changed in the semi-finals, and uh, it was a bit too brave to try and get the better of Smarslik and Wuffenden off gates one and two. But uh, Artem Laguta won't be too disappointed. He's won his first Grand Prix, and uh, he still picked up some decent points this evening. So... He won't be far away in Gorzhov. Smarzlik working hard, not quite at his best, but um, you can never rule him out. And of course, in Gorzhov, you wouldn't put it past him to win both nights on his home track. Yep. Ty Wolfenden about to be presented with his prize. Popular yep. man here. He is. He'd be, he'd be absolutely delighted with that outcome as well, Ty. We were all a bit concerned last night when he took his boot off after that crash with Freddie. And you said at the time, didn't you? Don't, don't take your boot off because you might not get it back on. I've done that and it swells up and you can't get it back on and it's a bit annoying. Ouch. Um, but um, uh, I think uh, he took his time. He, he looks his... OK, doesn't he? He looks good. Yeah. He looks really good. And uh, I think he's enjoying living here with his family. Mm. So, yep. uh, no, a great night of Speedway. Two good nights of Speedway. Yeah, and, you know what uh, a beautiful part of the world it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a, it's a great destination. It's a smashing city. It's cosmopolitan. It's got everything you need. It's a fantastic stadium. And the, the Speedway track has improved dramatically with the changes they made two or three years ago. Before then, it was difficult to pass here. It was too narrow. But now they've opened it up. It's one of the best Speedway tracks in the world. Well, over two nights, we've seen some tremendous action. Mm. Um, something has been happening in almost every race. It's very rare, I think, mm. looking back generally over the, the two nights. It's very rare that, that we've had a race where, you know, OK, the leader might have been well clear, but if that's been the case, from second start and to third, second and third, have been yeah. having a ding-dong, haven't yeah, they? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's been it's been entertaining stuff. So, been a good advert for the Grand Prix, that's for sure. And Janowski being chanted all around the stadium. He's going to love that. And uh, very proud people in the, uh, the polls. 
Yeah, it's terrific. And, uh, the ticker take time. Speedway Grand Prix is back, and what I was Big saying time. there, it's first you back, can have all it? the discussion about the point scoring, and you can go on and on and on and on and on about it, and you can go on and on and on about the tyre situation, but after the pandemic, and during the pandemic, Grand Prix Speedway is back. Stop moaning, everyone. <laughs> this is fantastic. It is. It is fantastic. Yeah. We have I got have... Speedway back. Absolutely. I'm very surprised that it's kicked off with the tyres. I, I think that some riders are just probably feeling a bit annoyed that they've missed out. They've been a bit complacent. But um, the blokes in second and third weren't on Anlis. And the bloke that won last night didn't win tonight. Admittedly, the bloke that won tonight was on one, but I'd be very surprised if it's a big, big advantage. Very surprised. It might be on certain nights. Um, uh, but it's a choice these guys are going to have to deal with now. Yes, the people of Rotslav are going to enjoy their Saturday night, I'm sure, Kelv. Mm. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, I'll tell you what, there's worse places to be on a Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. It's great. Well, a couple of nights we've had, plus our um, dig digital show that we've done as well with Talking Dirt and Monster Energy. So it's been a busy old weekend, Kel, but it's great to be back, isn't it? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, Nigel, and it's been superb. We're a bit rusty last night, but hopefully we'll get better by the time we get to Gorjov. I was rusty but, tonight, calling a but, result um, after three races. Yeah, <laughs> three three heats, even. Three laps, even. Yeah, three laps, yeah. There we go, but uh, a smashing night. Round, round two of the FIM Speedway Grand Prix stayed in the Olympic Stadium in Wroclaw. After the victory for Artem Laguta on opening night, round number one, our Warriors of Shale gathered again to go through the motions and see who could assume top spot in the title race. Now, Laguta was going about it the right way, riding beautifully, but he didn't have it all his own way on this occasion and really had to work hard and dig deep. Riders who'd struggled last night, like Niels Christian Everson, rode beautifully and managed to edge their way through to the semi-final. Max Frick as well in his first full season as a Grand Prix ri rider, a full, fully fledged Grand Prix rider, while well, he was riding so much better as well. Ty Wuffen and Doug Deep, but Matt Sajanowski was consistently the best rider all night. Some high-profile casualties who didn't make the semi-final, Patrick Dudek, Leon Madsen, the world number two, they fell by the wayside and agonisingly missed out. Dudek, ironically, if he'd have won his last race, he would have gone through on countback, but he was denied into second spot. The action was fast and furious again as Janowski turned on the style and the Wroclaw crowd really enjoyed seeing their man turn on the style as well as Ty Woffen and, of course, who rides for the club at the Olympic Stadium. Some fantastic action. Bartosz Marslik, the reigning champion, came strong at the end after a slow start, really got his act together superbly. It was great to see Niels Christian Everson, who's so popular everywhere, he pulled off some fine moves to get through to the semi-finals. Late on... There was drama as the track started to produce some unexpected moments like this as Gleb Chuganov brought down Emil Saifudinov. Thankfully, both boys were OK. Emil ultimately hadn't done enough to get to the semis anyway. Chuganov crept through on countback. Janowski absolutely immaculate on his way through to the final. Wuffenden and Smarslik had a real epic contest in the semi. But in the final, the home rider, Matt Sajanowski, was the winner. He leads the title race.